us in the pledge. Yes, please. Take your hand over your heart and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, Trustee Wilson. Here. Trustee O'Neill. Present. Trustee Broughton. Present. Trustee Stephan. Present. Trustee Sanchez. Present. Pursuant to Government Code Section 54954.2b2, the Board may take action on items of business not appearing on the posted agenda upon a determination by two-thirds of the Board, or if less than two-thirds of the member are present, a unanimous voter that is present. That there is a need to take immediate action, that that action, the need for action came to the attention of the local agency subsequent to the agenda being posted as specified. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions to the agenda? Um, actually, I believe there's one correction to the agenda. It's more of a typo than anything else. Um, under the action agenda, President number one, the uh, certification of signatures, the item list area four is still vacant, but that, as we know, that vacancy has been filled, so Trustee Wilson will be add, should be added to the list in the agenda. Uh, Leanne, has that been corrected on the posted agenda, or how do we correct that? I'll correct it after the Okay. At this point, we want to add the other two signatures. At this point, I also need to add two, uh, uh, two other signatures. That would be Linda Valkenberg and Steve Renew will be added to the signature page. I'm sorry, who is Linda Valkenberg? She is a consultant that works for us uh, every year. She's going to she's going to be working for us for a four month period uh, due to a recent uh, resignation that I received this morning. Anything else? Okay, so we have, and that's all in that same uh, same item. The number one certificate, president number one certification of signature. So. That needs to be corrected, and when we get there, we'll discuss it again. All right, if there are no other changes, the agenda stands confirmed as amended, and the board will convene to closed session. We will return to for open session at 10.30. First is that uh, our voices are not being projected well. Please do not hold the microphone when you are speaking. Bring it up to you. Don't swallow it. Don't put it too far away because we're not being projected out into the live streaming. So make and if you turn to look at someone, don't turn the microphone. Turn your head, please, so that we don't lose the flow of the audio, because uh, Mike is having a difficult time keeping us being broadcast for the public and for the campus. The other item I need to bring to everyone's attention is that there is a major event scheduled in this room later today, and we have been asked to try to be out of here no later than 3 o'clock in order to uh, tear down the boardroom and set up for the event. So I'm going to request that we try to be as brief as we can today so we can get through the entire agenda prior to uh, the 3 o'clock timeline. And that takes us to the next item on the agenda, which is public comments, item number 6. Persons who wish to speak to the board on any item may do so at this time. There is a time limit of 3 minutes per person and 15 minutes per topic unless further time is granted by the board. Your comments will be timed and you will be asked to stop speaking when the timer sounds. 
Please understand the board welcomes your comments, but is not able to respond to those comments. We have two requests for public comments today. The first is from Professor Hazan. Please come forward, please. Good morning, welcome. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the we board. We need you to use the microphone, oh, sure. Professor, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the board. My name is Alex Hassan, Assistant Professor of Speech Communication. And on behalf of myself, my students, and all students, Tanya Nunez would love to serenade each and every one of you and sing a beautiful ballad simply entitled, You Will Never Walk Alone. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high, and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, there's a visit here I asked for more information on the bond issues and I was concerned as a homeowner now that's my role now and moving into a new facility new house and I am concerned about taxes and that the public not be taxed without representation though I'm not a teapotter so <laughs> um, but I think it's important and I was very pleased I did uh, hear from uh, Steve Renew we met about a week ago. I had quite an intense session in terms of the finances. I better understand that now, and I appreciate that, sir. And uh, But I will be keeping an eye on things, so take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Keller. All right, that takes us, that's end of public comments. That takes us to agenda item number seven. Are there any corrections to the minutes of the regular meeting of April 19th, 2013? If there are no corrections to the minutes, they stand approved. The next item of business is recognition. Dr. Kim? Yes. Uh, this will be a few minutes, uh, and hopefully every May we'll have an opportunity to recap uh, the prior year. Uh, and in the future, I'd like, I'm, I'm happy we had uh, one student here uh, with one of our professors. And so 
I hopefully in the future we'll have more individuals here. But if you'll just give me a few minutes. Uh, as part of uh, my report today, I want to present College of the Desert's highlights for 2012-2013. And uh, I'm not going to get everything, but uh, you'll be tired by the time I get finished with what I read. Uh, and I don't, it, this is really an opportunity for me to brag about our students, our faculty, and staff. So when we're looking at students' access and success, uh, a new procedure was created by the nursing faculty for student admissions into the, into the RN program. We implemented a new priority registration system. The EDGE program was implemented to assist students in the assessment and placement process, and this was an outcome of the Student Services Title V grant. An automated wait list system was implemented by admissions and records staff. The COD Foundation stepped up with a $100,000 donation that supported 30 additional spring class sections and almost 800 students enrolled in those high demand classes. We have 729 graduates for 2012-13, a steady increase over the past 10 years from 447 in 2003. We have 221 certificate earners walking for the first time at commencement. Dr. Kelly Hall, Reve Reynolds, Dr. Anna Belneri, Avanti Simmons, and Peter Sturgeon served on the planning committee to implement this change. The number of COD students completing the FAFSA increased over 10% from last year. The college won a $1,000 prize from Pathways to Success. This was accomplished again through the combined efforts of the Title V HSI grant and uh, the financial aid office staff. For student engagement, 50 students participated in the March on March. John Arroyo and Jessica Espino served on the College Planning Council. Andrew Campbell served on the Board of Trustees. ASCOT, ASCOT ensured that the student perspective was included in the follow-up process for accreditation. The Green Council is co-chaired by Eleanor Campbell, uh, June Trin, Brenda Valdez, Brianna uh, Zarni, and Timothy Duran also served on the Green Council. The student senator position was created to serve on the Academic Senate. Brenda Valdez holds that position. Student awards and honors. KCOD's DJ Mike Mozingo won first place for most innovative show and was in the top five category nationwide for the best on-air personality and best specialty music show. He received a total of three trophies at the conference. Uh, Lorelei Jackson is the faculty advisor for KCOD. The softball team, led by uh, head coach Thomas Armstrong, assistants Priscilla uh, Velasquez, Harold Hicks, excuse me, Harold Hicks won the conference and the regionals. They were only one game away from winning the super regionals. <laughs> Student athlete Karina Romero is the first COD softball player to win a Division I full ride scholarship. She will be continuing her education at the University of California Riverside where she will be a pre-med student. For the 26th consecutive year, the golf team won the Foothill Conference. Tony Manzoni is the longtime head coach, and the assistant coach is Lee Woodard. A team of Mesa students came in first overall in the program's annual statewide math challenge. Almost 190 Mesa students and teams of five or more participate from 21 Mesa Community College campuses. Dr. Carl Farmer is the Mesa fac faculty advisor. In football, one of our student athletes, Brandon Vandenberg, a Pathways to Success student at COD, received a full ride scholarship to Vanderbilt University. The football team was coached by Dean Dowdy. In more sports news, College of the Desert had our first ping pong player, Ahmed Hindawi. Ahmed made it all the, made it to the final eight in men's singles. He lost his final match to the, to the athlete that ended up winning the tournament. He was coached by Carlos Malandado. <laughs> 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 our, student news, our student newspaper, the Chaparral, received a first place award from the Nationwide uh, Scholastic Newspaper Awards from the American Scholastic Press Association. Ted Grofer is the faculty advisor for the Chaparral. Phi Theta Kappa students, Octavio Garcia and Thomas Lopez, were selected to the Phi Theta Kappa All California Academic Team. The faculty advisor, advisor for PTK is Alex Hazan and Steve McCree. 
Monica, oh, as for staff, Monica Lopez and Barbara Garza were selected as scholarship recipients for the California Association of Community College Registrars and, Admission, and Admissions Officers. Uh, the admissions and records staff led by Dr. Annabelle Neri received statewide recognition for the process used to complete the college's 320 report. That's a long way from the front, pipe, front page headlines about inaccurate FTE reporting. Valerie Stiff uh, received the Judith Mandel Award in recognition of her contributions to COD adjunct faculty. For our faculty, Heather Beans was recognized as an honored member of the Covington's who, Who's Who of Executives and Professionals. Douglas Kroll published his fourth book, The Perfect Flood, about a dramatic helicopter rescue during the Christmas Eve 1955 flood in Yuba City, California. Doug was also awarded the Coast Guard Auxiliary Meritorious Service Medal by the U.S. Coast Guard for his work with the, with the Coast Guard Historian's Office in Washington, D.C. This year, during the Adjunct Service Award Ceremony, we offered 10 adjunct with 5 years, 3 adjunct with 10 years, 4 adjunct with 15 years, and 2 adjunct with 25 years. Our nursing program was selected uh, for the Hearst Foundation's Award from the National League for Nursing. This award is given for demonstrating exceptional integration of the innovative advancing uh, for, excuse me, exceptional integration of the innovative advancing career excellence for seniors curriculum and resources and innovations in geriatric nursing education. Lead faculty for this project was Betty Poluski and Linda Murphy. I only have uh, one and a half pages more, but uh, okay. Uh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Uh, the registered nursing program received reaccreditation from the Board of Registered Nursing just a few days ago. Wayne Boyer, the Director of Nursing, was in attendance at the committee meeting in Los Angeles to receive the notification. Faculty involvement. The Academic Senate, led by President Zarel Becker, implemented the Meet the Faculty series. The first event was held on September 11th, where 50 faculty and more than 20 students attended the ice cream social. A task force was created to create the college's first enrollment management plan. Co-chair chairs were Tony DeSalvo, Dean of Communications and Humanities, and Zarel Becker, Academic Senate President. Faculty members serving on the committee included Dr. Basil Augustine, Counseling Department Chair, David Bayshore, Adjunct Association President, Gary Burstam, Faculty Association President, Kim Dozier, Communication and, Human and Humanities Department Chair, Jeff Ocopian, Math Department Chair, Linda Emerson, Social Science Department Chair, Kelly Hall, Business Department Chair, Nancy Moles, Science Department Chair, Wendy Sanders, uh, Early Childhood Development uh, Department Chair, Bina Isaac, Dean of Institutional Technology and Institutional Res Resource, Laura, excuse me, Laura Jimenez, Classified Association President, uh, Dr. Annabelle Neary, Dean of Enrollment Services, and Carl Phillips, Dean of Library and Learning Resources. A group of students led by Jay Lewinstein created the COD Friends of the Earth. Most of the events were held at the Mecca Thermal Campus. Denise Diamond organized the Rumi Project, a show of student art, poetry, and music held at the Marx Arts Center. I cannot say thank you enough to all the students, faculty, and staff who are dedicated to our college. When you, whenever you create a list like this, you know you leave out probably more people than you include. Of course, everyone contributes, and I could not possibly list or even know all the wonderful things we have accomplished this year. But I do know that this highlights, li this highlights list is much longer than the list of negative things we encountered this past year. Of course, the list also illustrates why we are also tired at the end of the year. I'd also like to thank students, faculty, and staff, as well as the Board of Trustees for allowing me to be some small part of these great accomplishments. Get some rest over the summer because next year's list is going to be even more exciting. Thank you. Oh yes, I, and we're, we've got a video, and I, I think that uh, a few of you have seen uh, the video, but uh, it's if you haven't, you're in for a treat. Thank you. When you step up from College of the Desert, you create young professionals.
you ensure quality health care. You protect our community. When you step up for CLD, you open doors to higher education. You build opportunity for career advancement. You make lifelong learning possible. <laughs> when you step up, we all benefit. I went to community college too. I'm Hispanic and what was expected at that time was that I would get married and my brothers were expected to go to college. But I fooled everybody and ended up going to school myself. And thank goodness for the community college system. My name is Taylor Bruce. I had a child when I was 16 and I really wasn't sure if I was going to be able to continue my higher education until I found the construction management that College of the Desert offered and I knew that this was the place for me. Receiving the Roy Wilson Scholarship helped me not only financially, but it also gave me the confidence that somebody had enough faith in me to help me pursue my dreams. I am proud to step up as a donor of the Roy and Pat Wilson Memorial Scholarship Foundation. I would like to thank all the donors for stepping up for the students at COD. Dr. Carrion was a pioneer philanthropist here in the Coachella Valley, and he started an endowment in 1984 here at College of the Desert. For me, this college is very important. I think it plays a big role here in our community. My family has also been touched personally by College of the Desert. My brother and my sister both attended College of the Desert. My name is Ruby Bessero, and I'm pursuing a major in sociology here at COD. I'd like to thank the Dr. Carrion Foundation for stepping up for me and for other students in the Valley for believing in this and for giving us that motivation to keep going with our education. Three years ago, we lost Celeste in a tragic car accident. In order to keep her dream alive and pursuing a career in medicine, we have chosen to award this scholarship in her memory. My name is Kim Miller. I'm a student here at College of the Desert studying biology. After graduating from COD, I will be transferring to UC Davis in the fall to pursue my dream of becoming a veterinarian and then I plan on coming back to the Valley to serve here. I'd like to thank all the scholarship donors for stepping up for COD students and helping us pursue our dreams. I was the first in my family to graduate high school and then college. I entered college without any clear direction. It was COD that opened my eyes to the possibilities. My first jobs were as a dishwasher and a prep cook. My dream was to become a chef. COD's culinary arts program opened the doors to that opportunity. COD is at the heart of our community. Their innovative programs are creating tomorrow's workers in renewable and clean energy jobs. I love my desert home. Whether you're here for a weekend, six months, or a year rounder like me, COD has a huge impact on our quality of life. Their graduates are firefighters, police, our nurses. That's why I've stepped up for College of the Desert. My time at College of the Desert opened doors for me to go to UCR and earn my degree in neuroscience. Now I'm on my way to medical school. That's why I stepped up for COD. That's why Wells Fargo and I step up for College of the Desert. Now as a business owner, 
never been more proud to step up to the city. 10,000 people, three food and beverage outlets. Thanks, you. Association CSEA, but I see it's not Laura, it's Mary. <laughs> yes. Yes. Most of you know me. My name is Mary Lisi. I'm the first vice president of. Don't move it. You can move it, but oh. just bring it closer to you. Okay, thank you, Mary. Okay. First vice president of the uh, classified staff union here. And on behalf of all of the classified, I'd like to welcome our newest trustee, Trustee okay. Wilson. Um, yeah. <laughs> Laro uh, couldn't be here. I think some of you know that his, his uh, wife had a procedure yesterday. He wants everybody to know that she's doing fine. And he thanks you all for your prayers and your thoughts. Um, next week is our picnic, which um, is going to be in this room. It's a classified school employees week. I've given you each a pin um, commemorating that. Thank you for, for wearing them. The picnic's going to be in here. We're, we promise we won't have any campfires or anything in here. We'll, we'll try to keep it you know, within fire code. Um, and all of you are invited. I, we got the message that you'll be halfway to Sacramento or something by the time we're partying. So we'll eat a hot dog in your honor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, this week we, uh, I think it was this week, we TA'd all of the open articles from our, from our successor uh, contract. And they're going to be ratified next week. The, um, our picnic is in here on Tuesday, and the ratification meeting is on Thursday. Now, a lot of emails went out with lots of wrong dates and stuff, and Stan sent them out wrong, and, and Lotto sent them to Stan wrong. And I am the one who sent them to Lotto wrong, so I'm going to forgive all of you who sent them out wrong. It was me. <laughs> so you know that when you get it. I know. Well, I'm going to take, take responsibility for it right here. So wait, what is it again now? Tuesday is the picnic. And Thursday is the ratification meeting, and then you'll get our, our uh, contract after that for your ratification. Um, also, we want to thank Dr. Kinneman for yesterday's forum. Um, I think a lot of questions were answered. It took a while to get questions started, but um, our, I didn't have anybody come to me afterwards and say, what on earth is going on over there? But I think the most important thing is that people know that if, when we know what's happening with the reorg, I was just put on time, wasn't I? You forgot? Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I have extra. No, I'll, I'll finish up quick. Um, that when the reorg happens and if any of our positions are in, in for change, that we'll be negotiating those changes. And that's what our staff was the most concerned about. <clears throat> so we appreciate you having that forum. And that is all of Lauro's report. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. CLD Foundation, Jim Hummer. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, to Ms. Wilson, welcome aboard in a different capacity than what you've been helping us out in the past. Thank you. Uh, first of all, after watching that video, um, I forgot how good it was. We showed it at the McCallum, and uh, I think we've got to show it more often. Um, I really have to thank Kay Hazen and Casey Strong for their genius in putting that together, and of course, Pam Hunter, who actually oversaw it. I just kind of was a bystander, but it really did a, did a job. Um, I think you've all got my report, so I'm going to be extremely brief. It should be out there. The one thing that hits me is we're going to try to step it up next year and try to do more than what we've done. I am very proud to say that uh, this year, as of actually late last week, we uh, hit over $4 million in revenues into total revenues into the foundation, which is, is now kind of a new benchmark, and we're trying to raise that. 
But I was astounded when I did some research that over $138 million a year is donated in this valley to a variety of different causes. I also was astounded when I really took a look at the registry list of charities and there's 1,020 in this valley. So we are in a competitive field. I believe education is one that cuts across all those board, all those uh, causes in the valley. Everybody loves education. We just need to get our message out. And we're working right now on next year's marketing program. We're going to be hiring two new individuals into the foundation to get on the streets and ask for money. Um, and one last thing. We're finalizing the Bernadette Peters sponsorships, and uh, one of the things we added this year to the $25,000 level sponsorship is a named scholarship for that sponsorship. So if somebody was a sponsor at $25,000, they will get a named scholarship. Uh, we're putting the program together right now, but we want to tie these events to things that are needed on campus. So the more we can tie the event to something on campus, I think the better it'll be able to sell. With that, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you very much, Jim. Mm -hmm. Academic Senate, Zarel Becker. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We have reached the end of an academic year and the end of my term as Academic Senate President. Um, I sent you a very long report detailing all the things that we've done, and obviously we'll not repeat them here. I think the ones of which we are most proud, uh, Meet the Faculty, which was always also already mentioned, I'm sorry, um, College Hour, which we've been discussing for 10 years and finally implemented, um, the uh, distance education uh, procedures are still in progress, but the ones we've passed are sorely needed and very well done. I give a lot of thanks to Felix for that. And equivalency, which has been a very, very big issue. Um, I'm very happy to report that as of today, all of the full-time faculty discipline assignments have been audited, and 279 of the adjunct assignments. So a very, very large thank you to Stan Dupree and Sam Sturman for getting this done. I've been working on that for eight years, so this is a very, very big personal satisfaction for me. Um, I'd just like to thank all of you on the board and all of the administrators for the support you've given the Academic Senate over the last couple of years. We would not have been as successful as we were without your um, ongoing support uh, of both the Senate and of me personally, so I appreciate that. I would also like to thank my leadership team, um, Douglas Redmond, uh, Curriculum Chair, Felix Mahuenda Donate <laughs> uh, at Tech, uh, Dr. Darlene Romano at Policies, uh, Ed Reed, Faculty Development, Robert Pellenberg, and Julius Barga, Adjunct Representatives. They have done a huge amount of work uh, the last two years uh, um, on a lot of different areas. We also have our subcommittee chairs, Dr. Kelly Hall, Equivalency, uh, John Fernald, Sabbatical, and Diane Terras for Meet the Faculty. So um, I'd like to thank all of them for that. And finally, I would like to congratulate the incoming Academic Senate officers at yesterday's meeting, Douglas Redmond was confirmed as the incoming Academic Senate President, and filling his position on curriculum chair is Dr. Kelly Hall, and elected to the faculty development is Lisa Socho. So they'll be joining um, Robert, Julius, Darlene, and Felix. So that will be your um, board that you'll be working with next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. Faculty Association, Gary Bergstrom. Good morning. Good morning. My final report as well. Um, again, some of this I will skip, but I'm sure you noticed the uh, accomplishments of Doug Kroll, Douglas Redmond, Lisa Socio, and Jeff Agopian. Once again, as I was writing this up, I was struck by the in incredible talent that we have with our faculty, and I was also thinking about how for everyone that contacts me with something to talk about, there's probably ten more uh, that are also doing outstanding things. Um, I'm very happy to announce this morning that the contract has been ratified uh, with an 81% approval rate. Our bylaws only require 66% to uh, uh, ratify a contract. We got 81%. We feel that is a very strong endorsement, so we're very pleased. A few final thoughts as I move back into full-time teaching. There's an old expression that it is better to give than to receive. How much happier people would be if they focused less on their own desires and more on fulfilling the goals and desires of others? 
When we are at the end of our lives, it won't matter how much money we made. It won't matter that we won an argument at an academic senate meeting. What will matter are the contributions we made to the lives of our fellow human beings. We work in an institution that is about changing lives. Let's remember that and focus less on ourselves. And you know, I say that and I think about myself as much as anybody else. I need to remind myself that a lot. But in relation to this, our adjuncts are a critical part of our system. Imagine the stress of never knowing for sure if you will be working the next semester. Cal State has a system that gives high quality, long-term, loyal, involved adjuncts a guarantee of at least one class each quarter. I think this system could be implemented here without placing the district, full-time faculty, or deans in any kind of a bind. I'd like to suggest that the board consider adopting such a system. If it works for Cal State, we could make it work here, I think. Next, I'd like to thank the board for an enjoyable two years, and I'd like to extend a warm welcome on the behalf of the full-time faculty to Aurora Wilson. I'd especially like to thank Dr. Kinnaman and Stan Dupree for embodying the spirit of interest-based bargaining. You are both true professionals and gentlemen. And Mr. Gonzalez, despite all of the grief the past two years. What always impressed me is how positive, professional, and friendly you stay. I'm not quite sure how you do that, but I am impressed. I'd like to thank my executive board, Jeff Agopian, Kim Dozier, David Aquistapachi, and Scott Cooper for their ready availability and wise counsel. I'd also like to thank my bargaining team, led by Steve McCree with the support of Douglas Redman and Maria Hasso. It is with the assistance of these outstanding individuals that I was able to accomplish my main goal as president, that is, changing the tone between union and administration. Come in. And I'd like to thank the faculty for supporting me the past two years. Leanne, you're a hoot. I love you. Thank you. Do we have a different room? Do we have a different room? Okay. Thank you. College of the Desert Adjunct Association, CODA. Uh, I don't see David. Kathy, are you going to speak today? We just want to thank everybody very much and say we had a good year. Thank you very much, Kathy. See, the Alumni Association, Jean Marchu. I don't see Jean, but he did submit a written report. All right, that takes us to the governing board, uh, beginning with alphabetically. Uh, Trustee Groton, please. I always like to go first because then when other trustees remind, you know, say something I meant to say, I go, oh yeah, that too. So, <laughs> always works for me. Um, I think the first new policy this board should implement is we just need more days in May. There aren't enough days to celebrate all the wonderful things that are happening on this campus. And looking at our president, I have to say thank you for that. But, and I'm, as he looks out at the rest of our staff and says thank you for that. We've come a long way in a year. It's not just because of you, but it's a lot because of you. I think your encouragement um, of the rest of the campus has changed the culture and moved us on the right path. So I thank you for that. This month was very busy. I've not attended, not even close to half of the things I'd like to have attended. The Hall of Fame was wonderful. It's a great chance to reach out to the community and say, thank you for being so great. It's a good chance to see friends that we don't see but that once a year. So um, it's, it's a don't miss this event date. Our musical, our play, the Little Night Music, was filled with talented performers. And uh, so those were the really, uh, they're just the top the events. But nothing will top this wonderful graduation that we're all looking forward to. The little business sort of things that you do because you're a trustee and they need to be done things are um, I've attended an agenda review meeting and 
had an opportunity to review the applicants on the that for our position, our vacant position of trustee. I have to say last Friday was a terrible day because for very good reasons. We had such a wonderful pool of people to choose from. I thank them all for offering their time to serve and I I'm not sure that I congratulate you, Aurora, but we're very glad to have you on board. So, <laughs> I keep telling you the condolence cards in the mail. Um, there, because it's the time of the year it is, um, and because there is potentially some good news out of um, Sacramento, and there may be some growth, uh, there have been ongoing conversations about uh, the Mecca Thermal Campus and the Indio Campus. The Indio building, I drive by several times a week and stop and take a picture with my phone and go, oh, it's really there because I'm from Missouri. <laughs> so I can't wait for that, for that to happen. Um, the Mecca Thermal Campus, uh, our deans have looked at the offerings that we have down there and there's <coughs> discussion of refreshing those classes of widening the selection, maybe not widening the number yet, but as time goes on and we can have more students than that, those, there can be more opportunities. My belief it's always been the uh, desire of this college to be green, not only by growing, by building green buildings, but by requiring students to drive less, because no building can replace taking that car off the road. In the case of the East Valley and the West Valley, it's more than that. It reaches out to students that can't get here or think they can't get here. So sometimes simply going to college, attending the classes, discovering, oh my gosh, I really can do this, will give that student the, the push, the impetus to reach out, to come to this campus, and then to transfer on to other choices as they advance in their dream. So we're looking at what can be done at the Mecca Thermal Campus, uh, what changes we can make there within the budget, what we can do to make that a better place, and as I say, NDO is coming right along and there's a beam signing in the future. So the really great days when we're going to open that door and the county will be cheering louder than we are because they're really ready for us to move on. Um, their, the robotics camp will be offered again this year. I say this because I'm hoping there's lots of you out there listening to this that know of a middle schooler that would like this great opportunity. We want to encourage, being the biologist I am, we want to encourage more students to go into science or to be science friendly. So look on our webpage. There will be a camp offered in Palm Desert at the Pace Center. There will be a camp offered at the Mecca Thermal Campus. And there will be a camp offered in the West Valley. So go on the web page, look at the flyer, which is very nice this year. And see which date works for you. Call the number, register your child. Uh, and the last and certainly not least, uh, it was very interesting to hear Zarel say how many years she's worked on a project. Um, <laughs> my personal can that I kick down the road fairly regularly is our reaching out to Sunline to have a better understanding with them. And I'm certainly not alone in this. Every trustee here has worked on this project. Uh, large percentage of the employees here at this college have worked on this project. We, at least Glenn Miller, who is uh, formerly mayor of Indio and on the council, stepped up. He's on that board. He's an Indio representative. And he stepped up to take our letter, the College of the Desert's letter, with a supportive letter from the Alumni Association asking that uh, that Sunline consider the opportunity, give, offering our students the opportunity to ride their bus. We're not asking for special privileges, we're not asking for new buses, new routes, more drivers, none of those things that would cost the Sunline money. We all know those buses are frequently not full and we would like our students to have that opportunity to ride those buses. So 
Those talks are ongoing. We certainly aren't there yet. We've not worked out an agreement. But Sunline will be coming back to, to the college, to Dr. Kinneman, um, soon. And hopefully there will be some kind of, of conclusion to that, a positive conclusion. Otherwise, I'll just be sitting here kicking that can down the road a little more, and they'll be eventually very tired of hearing this this bell of me ringing, please, we need to ride the bus. So that concludes my report for this month. Thank you. Trustee Sanchez, hold please. As a big proponent, and I concur with Trustee Broughton, transportation is a very critical issue here for our college, for our students. I remember myself when I didn't have a car and I had to go to school. Transportation is, is accessible and very needed here at COD. So on our committee, and I would love more help from other trustees that Becky and I and other trustees hope to join. It's going to be there's going to be a Sunline meeting Wednesday, August 22nd. Um, it's a public event at Sunline. Um, we need your help, students, faculty, staff. Um, it's a very urgent need for our students. Um, it's very important transportation, so um, just want to mention that. Um, something that's happening, I just, I just want to mention, you know it's May. I want to say something to our graduates of COD, the May graduates, believe in yourself and all that you are. Know that there is something inside of you that is greater than any obstacle. I want to congratulate all the graduates of COD for this May um, 2013. Now, um, it's been a busy month. I'm no longer the newbie, Aurora. <laughs> so, so I want to also um, congratulate Aurora and welcome her to our board, um, but just wanted to mention um, a couple of the items that happened. I'm very proud of um, the College of the Desert Diversity Council um, attended that. It's my second meeting only, so um, thank you, uh, Stan, for chairing that meeting. Um, and all the faculty that came out and administrators that came out to that meeting and your busy schedule. Um, attended the trio ceremony, which was very, very dear to my heart. Um, our keynote speaker was the Assemblyman Manuel Perez, and um, that student, um, one of our students gave one of the most inspirational speeches I've ever heard in my life. This is what COD has, and I'm looking forward for these students to come back to our Coachella Valley and add something to our community. What an what a inspirational speech um, she gave. Um, and we also had a former um, ACES student that now attends UCR come back to COD, which was very beautiful as well and gives such a compelling and inspirational speech as well. Um, I also, on April 15th, attended the transfer ceremony, which was also really neat as well. These are all my firsts. So if you see me with the camera, it's just this is all my firsts as a little newbie here. Um, just on, uh, attended on the 14th, I want to thank Steve Renew and Eleanor Campbell for doing such an outstanding Green Council open conversation uh, event. She brought, along with Steve Renew, people from our, our community. That's what the C in College of, of the Community College of stands for, bringing in the community, bringing in our employers, and having the students meet them. It was fantastic to hear somebody from an agency say, here's my business card. You're looking for a job. That's, it was just wonderful to have that type of direct access from the students to meet with the employers. We had someone from the Imperial Irrigation Department. HR came out to COD. This is what COD is about. And this is, I am so proud to be part of this and just want to thank you for that opportunity. Um, Another, on May 9th, attended the EOP Care Award Ceremony. Um, our, our very own Dr. Neary gave such an inspirational speech. Thank you for giving that to our students. Thank you, Carol, the EOP office, and many others, because I may forget all their names, because it takes a village, it takes a lot of the staff to put this together. But what an inspirational speech you gave for our students, and, and it's wonderful to hear that. Um, this so we're so student um, focused here. It's so beautiful. 
Um, wanted to mention that on April 26, I attended the Desert Hot Springs College Fair Day. Um, it was wonderful to be part of that community as well. That was really wonderful. Um, and we brought some more middle schools to our um, Upward Bound program. So we're getting out there. COD is getting out there and touching the lives of our middle school and bringing them here. So it's, it's just wonderful. And um, <clears throat> during the week of April, we were be viewing applicants um, being part of the ad hoc committee. It was pretty tough. And thank you, Michael. I didn't formally congratulate you. And just the time you took to look over the applicants as well and all our trustees that took the time to look at the applicants. It took a lot of time to really go through that. So it was a, you know, I, I was with fever, <laughs> but I had to come out here. <laughs> I'm sorry if I had to come, to, but it was such an important thing for me um, and us and all of us here on campus. Um, we had the Desert Hot Springs Health and Wellness Day, the day of the child. So I really want to thank um, the nursing department for providing um, the students also came out. There were so many there. I heard that we were the loudest table there. So John Marmon and I went as well. And then the nursing um, students were out on the other side talking to the community. So that was such a wonderful event. And thank you, um, nursing department, for coming out there and helping us out to that community. Um, <clears throat> attended the Alumni Recognition Awards. Um, giving awards and lifetime achievement awards to several faculty adjunct and um, Dr. Juan Lujan on his lifetime achievement award. Attended the adult basic education high school GED graduation ceremony. It was wonderful. You know, um, having taught here at COD part time at that program, we, we tend to forget adult basic ed. Adult basic ed and our GED programs are very critical at our community college. Um, the heart, the, the, the struggles that those particular students have. We have and we owe it to our community at the college to provide that service. So I'm very touched and I just want to give kudos to our um, adult basic ed and GED program as well. Um, it was wonderful. I want to congratulate our new ASCOD, um, newly elected uh, members. I was there. I came by and just saw the process of elections. They were actually really campaigning. I heard that what there were a couple of the students campaigning out in Mega Thermal, um, really <laughs> wanting the whole process of an election. What a wonderful hands-on approach. It was a battle for the finish. We have some great, uh, we, President uh, Eleanor Campbell, we have Brianna, and I just want to congratulate our newly elected ASCOD members from College of the Desert. So let's give them a round of applause for our students. Um, and uh, attended as well. I don't want to bore you, but the, little, the uh, performance at the McCullum Theater, that was wonderful as well. Great performance and wonderful sets. If you, if you went to the event, you'd see that one of our faculty members does all these beautiful sets you know, for us, and he's done that for so many years. So these are little details that make it happen and, and they don't get acknowledged enough. Um, and a few final thoughts. Um, the Desert Hot Springs Educational Center, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I don't want to kick it so much, but it means a lot to our community out in Desert Hot Springs. I just wanted to get a more thorough update and find out what is going on with the Desert Hot Springs Educational Center and just wanted to always kind of bring that to light. Um, transportation and our Desert Hot Springs Educational Center is something, um, Becky, I think I'm going to be kicking that can. Got it from you. Okay, thank you so much and happy graduation and congratulations to our 2013 graduates. Go Roadrunners. Okay. Um, this time of year is one of the happiest times of the year for educators and being an educator, to me it's always like Christmas in May instead of Christmas in June where I teach, um, but it's Christmas in May out here and it really is spring because it abounds with student success and as I give my report, if you want to participate when I finish each thing, you can scream student success because I think that everything that um, I've gotten to participate in this last month 
just reeks of student success and it's thanks to the community college faculty, the staff, the administration, everybody here putting all the effort in all year and then we reap our rewards this time of year. It's like a big harvest. So um, as I go through this, the Hall of Fame Awards. What always strikes me about the Hall of Fame Awards is, yes, we're honoring, we're honoring people in the community. I'm not at the microphone. Okay. We're honoring people in the community, but a lot of the individuals that we're honoring are student successes of community colleges. And a lot of them this year were from our community college. And that is something that just, it just blows my mind away because these are people that are respected in our community and they've given back to College of the Desert and they are a product of College of the Desert. So that to me just screams student success. The next one, I was able to attend the double, or part of the second half of the double header of the COD women's softball against Southwestern. As you know, Southwestern was a community college that I was fortunate enough to be able to attend. And um, we beat them. Um, and you know, that's very mild for me to say it that way, because in <laughs> those football games, I scream I other things. Yeah, and you don't want to be behind me, right? Okay, but we did a super job. And there was, uh, some, there was an objection um, by Southwestern on one of the things that happened during the game. And it took about an hour to resolve. But the thing that impressed me the most was the way both coaches and both teams handled the situation with all the umpires. And uh, it was resolved. And, um, but it was resolved in a way that taught everybody there how games should be played. You know, I mean, you've all seen on the TV and on the YouTube, you know, all the fights that break out at some little 10-year-old sports game. Well, this was a pretty important game that we were at, and nobody got upset, nobody yelled and screamed. There was no, you know, making signs or any of that stuff. It was the most amicable way of settling something, and it was the right way to settle things. And once it was settled, the game went on, and it was a wonderful game. It really was. It was an exciting game to be able to see. Um, oh, one thing I got from one of our um, CSEA members was he was able to attend the um, Wounded Warrior fundraiser on 422, and our color guards performed, and I asked him to send me a picture. This was black or white because I printed it off my computer, and I didn't have any colored ink that day. But... Um, it's our students, and again, this is student success. Um, the foundation board meeting that I was able to attend, what a great thing to be able to, as a board member, to be able to attend their meeting. Um, they did a presentation and a discussion of the 2013-2014 um, operating budget. They had a wonderful PowerPoint on how the, they can increase donations and contributions and fundraising for the college. And um, they gave several different uh, pros and cons for a multi-year commitment um, revision to their budget. And the thing was, the whole point of it, again, was student success. And um, every time I see something like that going on with one of our auxiliaries, the first thing that comes to my mind is these people care. They might not have gone here, they might not be attending here, but they care enough and this is such an important institution in our valley. Um, I also attended the artist reception at the March Center, and I was able to see the scholarship winners from our school, the, the artist scholarship winners works. And again, student success. Um, Cup of Happy, open mic was also that night. I attended that. That was where I was able to find our lovely young lady to serenade us and conjole one of our professors into bringing her here today. So I hope everybody enjoyed her because, you know, I, I had to kind of twist arms. But he brought the whole class. And I thought that's wonderful because they can see the government, the governing body that makes the policies and procedures for the college to be able to function for their benefit. And again, I love to have students showing their success to us and to the community. And what a better way to do it if people are watching out in the community. Um, 
these board meetings, I mean, sometimes they're not really exciting, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, you hear a student sing like that, you know, in front of, in this kind of an atmosphere, you know, with just a guitar player, that is student success. Um, the next night was <coughs> Rumi, the Rumi Project. I attended that, and uh, students participated in that, and they were so engaged. And it's something that, you know, a lot of my students, I'm sure, would go, this is, you know, you love that. I, I hate that. I just really just like that word. It begins with a B, uh, boring. Um, but um, for me, it was exciting, and the students were engaged, and they loved it. It was really um, just a wonderful experience, and it showed student success. These professors were able to reach these students. Um, a COD Friends of the Library book sale was the next night. And as our new trustee knows, I showed up and my boyfriend walked the dog and I got busted because my dog was on campus. But that's okay. Um, I attended the book sale. I bought books again. Um, but, you know, again, this is one of our auxiliaries supporting the college and um, for the purpose of student success. Then I um, had a meeting the next week with the president, a brief meeting, and uh, I went over to the Human Resource Center for training for the selection of our new um, trustee, and then I went to Brown Act training in Rancho Mirage, because to me it's really important to be trained and be updated on things so that I can be better in uh, helping to implement student success. Um, I'll speed things up here because a lot of these were already mentioned. Adult Basic Ed Graduation, Alpha Mu, Gamma, New Ceremony, uh, the COD Voice Class Recital, the Maritai Recognition and Retirement Celebration, the Transfer Recognition Ceremony, the COD Symphonic Band um, Performance, the Phi Theta Kappa Ceremony, um, again, Cup of Happy Open Mic, um, trio recognition, and the COD Jazz Band. These were all examples of where our students showed student success. Um, something I didn't mention here was a special board meeting where we made the selection of our new trustee, Aurora Wilson. And um, I wanted to bring that up because, again, that is student success because Aurora is a product of a community college like I am. And uh, now she's a sitting trustee here. She attended school here. She took some classes here, like I did. Came back and take, took some additional classes here. Um, also, I attended the President's Forum yesterday because I wanted to hear what was going on in the, the college community here, uh, questions that they might have had about a reorganization, because we're trying to reorganize the college again so that we can ensure student success. And I wanted to hear what the concerns of faculty were. I wasn't here to be the spy or anything like that, and I know Trustee Wilson wasn't either. But uh, So was I, I was there. Yeah, yes, the, um, Trustee Sanchez came as well. And, um, you know, we weren't trying to spy. We just wanted to hear so that maybe we could help out to ensure student success. And that's what this college is about, and this time of year I see it. Big headlines. <laughs> colors everywhere, and I wish the press would pick up on that. <laughs> End of my report. Thank you. Trustee Wilson. I'm very impressed by the commitment by our trustees, <laughs> all the, the events that you attended, and uh, wow, um, I've got quite a bit of catching up to do. Um, I'm so pleased to be here again. Thank you to the board for uh, appointing me to the position. And believe me, I will work very hard, and I'm very committed to College of the Desert. Um, in terms of events that I attended, um, I, I also attended the symphonic uh, band performance, and that was great. You know, I, I do come from a musical background, and um, having played violin and piano and accordion and a couple of other things, um, but I uh, really enjoyed hearing uh, uh, the band and seeing the students play. Um, and then also attending the TRIO and the ACES uh, event and having Assemblyman Perez there uh, was just um, a great honor. Uh, and the students really embraced that. My goodness, everybody was posing with him afterwards, wanting uh, pictures. And uh, it was just, uh, he was just very, very well received. 
Um, and of course, just sitting down with Joel and getting uh, to know, um, going through the agenda and attending the President's Forum again to meet faculty and also to kind of see firsthand the relationship between the faculty and the President and, and seeing you know, what the temperature of that water was. Um, so that was, it was good that I, I, I was very appreciative of being there. Um, many thanks to the staff. You've been so gracious in helping me uh, getting, uh, to get up to speed. Uh, Leanne has just been just marvelous. And I think uh, you know, I dial her, um, you're my speed dial now. <laughs> um, but, uh, and again, having worked in local government for almost 20 years, I'm very impressed with the professionalism of this board. Um, and again, look forward to, to participating and being part of it. Um, and also, eventually, look forward to being able to address everybody by name, <laughs> first name, and, um, and getting to know where every building is and not having to ask security, where, <laughs> where do I go for this? Um, but yeah, and not having to uh, elbow Michael and saying, who is that? <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, again, thank you uh, for, for um, your indulgence and, and allowing me to get up to speed. Uh, yesterday, I was at the uh, Indian Wells City Council meeting for a, a presentation relative to my role with uh, CVAC, Coachella Valley Association of Governments. Uh, their council member, Doug Hansen, did acknowledge my um, my appointment uh, to the COD board, and uh, they were very pleased to see that. And I also mentioned the possibility of a presentation to the city council with regard to College of the Desert. I, you know, as I know we have our cities are our partners, and we need to continue to to work uh, on those relationships. So that's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tr Student Trustee Campbell. Wow, those are a lot of long reports. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this month I attended the Club Olympus. It was an extraordinary event put on by ASCOT. The event was well organized by our student leaders. I would personally like to thank our ASCOT Vice President that was able to manage Club Olympus on a very small budget, which is a very hard task to accomplish. So thank you, Jessica Espino. I hope I just learned her name. <laughs> <The last> name. <laughs> I, I also I, I attended the transfer recognition a ceremony I would like to congratulate all the students transferring. I wish the best for each individual student to go out, go out and make a difference in our world. So thank you for not giving up and working hard to, to fill your dreams, to fulfill your dreams, which I know for certain that you will change society for the best. So thank you. I would also, I would um, like to thank Eleanor Campbell for giving her time to serve as the student co-chair for the Green Council and really really stepping it up for the students here at College of Desert. I urge all committees to consider having students as co-chairs. This is a great way to create, the, create leaders. I also want to thank Steve Renew for filling this position as the co-chair for Green Council. So thank you, Steve Renew and Ella. I, I would also, I would like to congratulate um, Brenda Badez for having the first um, Student, uh, I'm not sure if it's student vo uh, vote or also just being able to sit on the green, uh, sit on the academic senate. So I think it's that, sit on the academic senate. Um, I would, um, I would also once again like to, um, I would like, to, I would like to think that she, um, I would like to say that she um, did a really wonderful, wonderful job for representing the students here at COD. Once again, I would like to urge committees to have student uh, participation by having uh, more. Um, members with votes or also with members with uh, being student co-chairs. Uh, I attend the TRIO and ACES transfer ceremony for all, the, um, for all the students who gave speeches. So basically, I, I attended the, the uh, TRIO and uh, the ceremony. I would like to uh, congratulate um, everyone from those areas from transferring. And, um, but I also would like to um, say that we had really good speakers there. And by that's, hearing the, their stories, uh, it's even motivating me more and more to make sure that we make sure that they're, they're having classes and they're able to uh, have more uh, programs. So anything we could do to create more policies or um, to make sure that students have success at the college and, and making sure that we um, um, keep awareness on campus too so students know what's going on. Like if anything changes, we need to make sure that happens. Um, I, uh, 
I would also like to thank all the students who will be leaving um, ASCOT, not in bad way leaving, but leaving <laughs> ASCOT, our student government, and also thank them for doing a really great job this year, because it's really time consuming being a student and, um, and being an ASCOT member going to an event, and um, you know, we're trying to focus on, we're, we're balanced, trying to balance both things and trying to get education, so um, I really would like to thank our ASCOT members and also congratulate the, the new members um, uh, that are going to join our ASCOT family because we would consider ASCOT as a family. We work with those people like once a week, but we, also, we, we never leave them in the office. We see them like every day. So we know we eat with them. We almost sleep with them. <laughs> it's, <not that> way. <laughs> it's like we're 24 hours there. Um, some concerns that I, I must bring up is that I, I, I did go to the, 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 the form for the questionnaire. Um, there was a, a member that, um, that was a faculty member that, that brought up about um, making sure that that she heard concerns about uh, not having uh, loans for the next semester. So I, she asked the question if how did we um, notify the students and, and, and how that um, and how that process would be. Uh, I mean, how we're basically going to notify the students and uh, we had Anne Lanier that basically gave the explanation, but I would really like to hear that today again so students that are listening are able to hear the reasons why they won't be able to have student loans next um, semester. Um, there's way more things, but I'm not going to take any more time, so thank you. Thank you, Andrew. It's my turn. I'm going to be very, very brief. First of all, I'd like to very much welcome Aurora. Thank you for, we thank you for volunteering to serve in this very difficult job, and we welcome you. And we know you're going to be an outstanding asset to us. Thank so you. Thank you very much. Uh, Andrew, congratulations on your second term victory. Uh, I would like to thank all the groups and individuals who invite the board to attend your various end of the year functions. Unfortunately, there's only so many hours in a day, a week, and a year, and they're all crammed into the one time, and we can't all attend all of them. But uh, we appreciate being invited, and we attend as many as we can. Uh, I also wanted to mention and thank, I'm thankful that Dr. Kinnaman did his report on the recognition because as we see things coming in our emails and we read the various recognitions that are being made of our students, I wanted mm -hmm. to mention that today and here we have a whole presentation so thank you very much for that sir. Uh, for the board, I just want to mention this white binder is I had uh, copies of all the policies that affect directly the trustees so that uh, you will have a quick reference instead of trying to look them all up on the um, websites. You have a quick reference for anything you might have questions about. Okay. And I want to thank uh, Gary and Sorrell for donating two years of your life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, having been there, I know how difficult it is, but I, and we, I know the board appreciates you as much as you appreciate it and express your appreciation of the board. We feel very much the same. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Kinman for his reorganization of video. I think it was a great way to present information in multiple formats so that everyone in the college community could have access to it at one time. It was very, very well done. Thank you. Uh, I attended, I'm just going to hit a few highlights, the Alumni Hall of Fame Awards, which has been mentioned. I just, it's always rewarding to me to see our alumni come back and be recognized at these events. And it's also very rewarding to see the staff and faculty recognized at this because what we have is actually the combination of what everybody does here. We have the students learning and going on and being successful, and we have the individuals, faculty and staff, who have made that all possible. And it's a very, very moving and rewarding event. And I, want, I wish Gene was here, but I hope he hears that we thank him very much and the uh, whole alumni board for all that they do to make that event such a success. Uh, we all, I also want to mention the Maritime <coughs> excuse me, Retirement Recognition event. Uh, thank you, Leanne. I think that was one of the nicest events we've had in a while. It was very well done. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a very positive, uplifting uh, way to recognize our retirees and to recognize uh, former trustee Hayden and his emeriti status in his 29 years devoted to the board. So thank you very much for that event. And I think I briefly covered everything. Okay? Thank you. And we are now into administrative reports. Dr. Kinnaman. Thank you, Trustee O'Neill. 
Uh, first, I'll address the financial aid issue. Uh, it was brought up at the town meeting that uh, there are federal loans that students are able to take out. And what we've experienced, and uh, when I say we are talking about community colleges in the area, uh, well, probably across the state, has experienced uh, rapid increases in the amount of loans that students are taking out. At the same time that we're experiencing increasing default rates on those student loans. And uh, most of our surrounding community colleges have stepped away from uh, the loan program because only a small number of the students typically take the loans out. And what occurs is when the default rate gets above 30, I think it's 30%, I'm uh, in my notes, uh, it risks all federal financial aid for the remaining students. So I'm going to get these numbers off a little bit, but I believe we have about 500 students uh, on the loan program, and we've went in the past five or six years from having $18,000 in student loans to over $3 million in student loans uh, for that, that smaller cohort of students. And our default rate is moving closer to that 30% which we have 7,000 students that have other federal financial aid, and those uh, students would, it would be at risk of losing their financial aid if we go above that, th <coughs> that threshold. And so, uh, like other colleges around us, I think you know one of the reasons are probably has increased as other colleges have gotten rid of their program, it may have uh, encouraged students to, to come here uh, where they could get the loans, but so that we don't risk uh, losing it for the majority of the 7,000 students that get uh, financial aid, uh, we are going to uh, pull back from that program. And I thank you for bringing that up, Trustee Campbell. This is a good uh, venue for us to, to indicate that. A uh, letter uh, was to be sent out, I believe, this coming Monday uh, that will be informing uh, students <coughs> about this. And uh, so it's timely for us to do it at this board meeting. So thank you. Will uh, we be putting that information on the website? I mean, yes. a very brief yes. synopsis, but it would help if you could look at it. Yes, too, definitely. For are we going to be taking student loans away for the forever, or just for this one semester coming up? Uh, at this time, uh, it's we plan on taking them away and not having them at this time. Okay. And it's something that we can revisit, though, as, as we look at the impacts. Also, uh, Dr. Neary had presented that we're looking at other types of funds to assist students that may be impacted by that. And so there may be other avenues to help our students that are relying on the loans. President Kevin, also, um, this is the administration from the college in terms of doing the loan. Students are still eligible to take out private loans through private vendors. And so part of the information we provide to students is that if they wanted to pursue a loan, how they go about doing that through private vendors. But how hard is it first to, to get through a private vendor? It, it would be more easy access to get it through the college? It, the, the difficulty is the default rate. And so ultimately, if we hit that default rate, we will lose all federal financial aid um, for all of our students. And so, so the difficulty is um, whether or not we could continue without, with that default rate. What we do have available is student scholarships, and so we are really going to try and push hard to have students apply for those scholarships. Also, students that apply by March 2nd are eligible for um, Cal Grants. And so um, we've been making a really strong effort to help students to apply on time. Um, one of the things I was going to say in my board report today is that we saw a 15% increase in applications um, by that March 2nd deadline. So we're going to continue to try and push um, students to apply on time so they're eligible for every financial aid uh, piece that they're available to. Um, and again, trying to make sure that they're aware of what their options are um, through private loans. What I would like to see is probably a form in the beginning of the fall because we're having new students coming in from high schools that we're not sure if they're going to be able to, um, if they're going to get financial aid or be able to have student loans. So at least they know that they're not, um, they won't be able to have that um, privilege. So, so it's probably a student form from the president or vice president would be nice. In uh, continuing with my report, I would like to also uh, 
mention briefly the Tree Oasis pro program, and that's the only program I'm going to mention uh, since there's so many and they have been men mentioned. But that was last night, and uh, for uh, anybody in the community that really wants to see uh, what the mission of the community college is, that's a program that you want to uh, be part of because um, it really gives you a glimpse of what I would call the soul of a community college. Uh, and you also you get a, an understanding, I think, a better understanding of why people get called to teach and work in a community college uh, when you attend such an event. So uh, for next year, if you've never been to a Trio ACES uh, event, I would encourage uh, everybody to attend. Uh, internally and externally. In addition, I'd like to ask Dr. Bice to stand. Dr. Bice has been working with us uh, for the past several months uh, in business affairs and uh, has been a great help uh, for me as we've been transitioning. And I just want to introduce you and let you say hi. It's <laughs> 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 a pleasure to be here. You've got quite a jewel of institution. Thank you. Uh, in addition, the, uh, I'd like to take a moment, uh, you know, it's going on a year in a, a few weeks, uh, or maybe about four or five weeks for me, uh, and uh, I want to uh, express my appreciation to uh, Adrian Gonzalez uh, for the, the past uh, year because uh, he has history in the institution, uh, has provided me with great counsel, uh, and is a true professional uh, and you know I'm very excited that I've had an opportunity to work with you and look forward to many many years of us working together in the future so uh, thank you for everything you've done to help me. And may I add thank you for that six month interim that became two and a half years we appreciate that. Yes, yes. And then of course uh, 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 Gary and Zarel, uh, I know you're moving to uh, out of this role, so you'll have more time to do other types of things. So we'll make sure that we uh, keep you on all our lists uh, for other things you might be interested in with all that spare time. And uh, thank you for the past year as well. The um, couple of things here. Uh, I know that. Uh, we have, uh, I received a resignation uh, from Wade. Wade's back in the back, so I'll uh, uh, point him out. Uh, Wade has a wonderful opportunity at another community college, and uh, I know that he's uh, probably excited about the opportunity. Uh, they're fortunate uh, to be getting you, and uh, again, it's uh, gonna be difficult uh, for us to, to see you go. And I appreciate uh, over the past year uh, everything that you've done, to, well, in many years, uh, as far as uh, our fiscal solvency and making sure that we're in a place now uh, when the economy is turning around uh, that we uh, have been solid through that whole period. So, uh, congratulations and uh, hats off to you, and uh, looking forward to, to seeing you do great things. Okay. Thank you. The uh, transportation issue was uh, addressed by Trustee Broughton, so thank you uh, for, and Trustee Sanchez, and uh, so we will uh, continue to, to push that. Uh, on educational centers, uh, the month of June is going to have a lot of time devoted for all educational centers, uh, Desert Hot Springs, Microthermal, Indio, uh, and West Valley. Uh, we, uh, we know how May's been, and I'm looking forward to uh, ramping up a little bit more on the centers. We will also be recruiting for uh, the director. Uh, again, we've elevated that role by having it report to the executive vice president. And the, again, the reason for that is uh, the importance of us developing those campuses and, and communities, uh, in those communities, and uh, also providing uh, uh, 
I think, more stature to the role so that uh, they can be fully developed uh, in a way that's uh, really designed for the community that they're going to be serving. And let's see, I think that uh, that's it. Thank you. What about the interview? Oh, that's it for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my, and that's my that, no, that's my cue to say, and now I'd like to ask uh, our uh, interim vice president. Still, it's all about the president. It's all about the president. <laughs> Learned that quick, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> you know, I know the politics. Um, I, I have a couple of things, and before I get into the highlights, uh, in keeping with the uh, in the spirit of, of celebrating our student success, uh, I want to thank the board for all the attempts you made to attend the student recognition ceremony. Um, as Michael said, uh, you could pretty much uh, be here 24/7 over the next couple of weeks, and uh, you're going to hit a student's recognition ceremony. But truthfully, this is why we do what we do. Uh, that's why we're here. Um, to see the student success that happens um, is just so refreshing and invigorating for all of us as educators. Um, and as I re like to remind the staff, I know that we're tired uh, when we get to here, but um, if you're not reinvigorated by what we've seen in the next couple of weeks, um, then you need to be here because it's so exciting to see um, our students progressing um, and achieving the accomplishments they've outlined for themselves. So in keeping with that, um, just a couple of quick highlights. Um, mentioned a lot of the things that have occurred, so I'm going to skip over a few. Um, but we are expecting about uh, 350 students to participate in the ceremony on Friday, next Friday. Um, we are looking at, for the 12-13 school year, 792, uh, seven, I'm sorry, 729 degrees being awarded, as well as 200 certificates. So you're saying um, 350 or 14? 350 or 10. But over the year, uh, which includes the uh, December graduates, we had 729 graduates um, with degrees, 200 with certificates. Um, there were several recognition ceremonies this past week, the Rotary Scholarships, the Transfer Recognition, the TRIO uh, program. It actually was an a, a event for the all three TRIO Student Support Service programs. So it was the DSPS, EDC, and ACES program. Um, it was, uh, we had a very uh, inspiring speech by Assemblyman Perez. Uh, the EOPS CARE program, Upper Bound, is coming up uh, Friday night. Uh, we had certificate earners uh, ceremony coming up tonight, and then also Mesa is having the recognition uh, tomorrow night. So <laughs> if you can attend, you'd be greatly appreciated. Um, the international program is reporting that they anticipate 25 graduates, um, five students receiving certificates, and of those 25 graduates, 20 will be transferring. Um, the ACES program is reporting that they have 31 graduates, 30 of which will be transferring. Um, some of the schools will be transferring to include uh, UC Santa Barbara, UC Riverside, Cal State San Diego, Sacramento, Northridge, Los Angeles, Fullerton, and Cal State San Bernardino, um, also Cal Poly. Um, in the fall, the ACES program had 30 students on the Dean's List and 24 on the Honor Roll. The TRIO DSPS program is reporting that, um, now TRIO DSPS is a relatively new program because so they're starting to see their first graduates. So they're reporting uh, 10 graduates, uh, one certificate earner, and seven transfers. Um, the Upper Bound program, uh, which uh, all of you know I started with uh, the TRIO SSS and the TRIO Upper Bound, so they're always near and dear to my heart. Um, this program is geared to our uh, high school students who would be the first in their family to go to college. Um, the Upper Bound program is reporting that they will have 20 graduates, uh, six of which received a $5,000 scholarship from CDEF's Pathways program. <laughs> the EOPS and CARE program is reporting 41 graduates, two certificates. Um, in the fall, they had 34 students on the Dean's List and 42 on the Honor Roll. Um, and as we were indicating, uh, the Financial Aid Office um, has really greatly increased what they've done around outreach. And so they are reporting a 14% increase in applications that were submitted by March uh, 2nd. Um, they increased their outreach um, to include 58 events that touched approximately 6,000 students. Um, now this includes potential students as well as current students. Uh, so I want to congratulate the uh, uh, Financial Aid Office for all the good work they're doing. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to pull it up really quickly. I want to congratulate the uh, 
Ascot students who were recently elected. Um, student elections were held May 7th through May 9th. Uh, the president-elect is Eleanor Campbell. The vice president is Brianna Zardi. Thank you. The secretary is Jenny Asuncion. Officer of Fiscal Affairs is uh, Charlene Beltran. Office of Communications is Coraline Booth. Office of Academic Affairs is Wendell Ingram. Office of External Affairs um, is still being counted. The independent senators are Jose Rodriguez, Ruby Besaril, Thomas Hughes, and our student trustee for another year will be uh, Andrew Campbell. So I want to congratulate you. Congratulate all the winners um, and want to uh, thank the uh, ASCOT advisor, uh, student life advisor, um, who is our world renowned uh, table tennis coach. Yes. Um, <laughs> and also give him special recognition because during Club Olympics, uh, he took it for the team and he was in the pie throwing booth. And many of us were able to go donate our dollar. And <laughs> or $20. Or $20, too. We did actually have an administrator donate $20 to allow many administrators to take advantage of that. So thank you, Carlos, for all you do and for all the great work you do with our student leaders. And that'll conclude my report. Thank you. Oh, if I may say one more thing, I apologize. Um, with the reorg, um, we are, uh, in student affairs, losing one of our um, really esteemed leaders in Dr. Neary. Um, she was here a little while ago, she yeah. stepped away. Um, she's taken on a new role for the college, which I think is going to be an excellent thing for our institution. She's excellent at research, and she'll be leading our research and um, accreditation and our strategic planning efforts. Um, so we're very excited to see her um, be able to contribute to the broader institution, but certainly within student affairs, we're going to miss her greatly. Um, she's very much a, a well-respected and um, a trusted colleague. Um, so we just wanted to publicly thank her for all the work that she's done with commissions and records. Um, and then I also want to welcome uh, Zarel Becker, who will be coming in as the interim over the Admissions and Records, Financial Aid, Counseling, Career Transfer Center, DSPS, and I believe the Bursar's office. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome <laughs> board, Zarel. Um, the list is getting bigger. The list is getting bigger. <laughs> That's the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> so, you get to picture that one out? This, <laughs> that job really has the other, other uh, uh, duties as a side. <laughs> <laughs> We have to learn that one. Yes. So welcome aboard, Thank you, Adrian. And then I uh, believe we have a report on a standard print. We do. I usually use this opportunity. The president always looks at me like, I don't say anything. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but typically, I would like to report on what's going on in the human resources department. Uh, but since we are at the end of the semester, the end of the school year, just like to join uh, and uh, briefly comment on a couple of things that have already been covered. One is to congratulate not just all the students who won elective offices, but all those who ran. Uh, and there were several. Uh, I hope the best person won probably did for each election, but we had a bunch of great students running for every position. And welcome back to, uh, to Andrew and look forward to working with him for another year. The other thing that struck me as interesting is one year ago today, we were finishing up uh, last year's school year, and it was a very different tone. I was watching a three bargaining unit speak today, and how last year I couldn't stop taking notes while Laurel, Zarel, Gary, and David seemed to have just come here to come after me. And it has just been a wonderful turnaround in the last year. I've enjoyed working with all three bargaining group, uh, groups. Uh, and the faculty senate, and today it was smiles, and today it was handshakes, and it, uh, I don't know if the boss caused it. Uh, President Kenneman, I'd be accused of uh, sucking up to the boss if I said that, but something has happened that's made it dramatically different one year later than it was a year ago today. Without singling anybody out except Gary Bergstrom, I'd just like to say that I'm <laughs> going to miss working with Gary as the uh, full-time faculty union representative. He has been tough. He's been hard. He has yelled at me. We've had disagreements. But he was always fair. He was always honest. He never let me forget that he had people to represent his constituents. But 
when I watched Gary uh, speak for the last time today, I was reminded of something that I heard President Kenneman say one time, which is, we want to find somebody who takes his job very seriously, but not himself. And Gary has been that way. He's worked very hard for his unit and managed to be down to earth, friendly, likable, and professional the whole way. So I'll miss working with you, Gary. Thanks. My final comment is for the young folks like Andrew. You may not have understood that Becky was just using an old saying when she says she's from Missouri. She's not from Missouri, she's from Georgia. <laughs> wondering how many states she lived in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the clock on the wall tells us we're a little bit already late, so we are going to convene back into closed session. We will reconvene into public session at 1.15. Okay, thank you, and we will hopefully we'll whip through the agenda quickly at 1.15, so we can process this room. Yeah, can you imagine God I just want to remind us all that we have to be trying to get out of here by three, okay? Uh, consent agenda is where we are in the agenda, that's item number 11. <laughs> all items on the consent agenda will be considered for approval by a single vote without discussion. Any board member may request that an item be pulled from the consent agenda to be discussed and considered separately in the action agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda I as presented? I would like to pull something from the... First, we need to move oh. it in. Oh. I move. I second. Okay, it's been moved and second. Any discussion? Um, I would like to speak to the item about volunteers, and it's my usual discussion of saying how much we appreciate the B, Human Resources, number one volunteers. I'd like to say how much we appreciate the community volunteer, volunteers to help our college. It makes a big difference. It helps our staff do their job better and it helps promote our students' needs and success. So thank you so much to not just these volunteers but all volunteers for this college. I'd like to speak to um, A1, approval of sabbatical leave requests. I'm really glad to see this on the agenda again. Um, I know Dr. Hardy has done extremely wonderful things with her students, and I'm glad she's going to have this opportunity um, for a sabbatical to um, further this program. And also Dr. Mole um, to help out with our students. Um, this ensures our students' success by having these sabbaticals. So I'm glad we finally got them back in there. Okay. Um, on action item agenda. The action agenda. Oh, consent. Um, I wanted to do action. Yeah, I'm sorry. Excuse me. We can't pull something off the action agenda because <laughs> it's already been approved. You can only pull something from the consent agenda to move it to an action item. I'm sorry. So all right then. Yeah. Okay. I would like to pull. Um, Physical services, physical services um, from the item one purchase order. Um, under pur purchase order, um, what is it? Uh, purchase order. The number is P002. Take a question about one. Is yes, it, it's, I wanted to know a clarification on uh, the, the cost. It's basically for new parking uh, ticket machines, it's 43000 for just one, 43000 Six hundred and twenty-five dollars and twenty-eight cents. Just to clarify, why does it cost that much? Do you want to pull the agenda item, or can we get a clarification from it? I think we can, can we get, get a clarification? clarification. Yeah, we can get a clarification. Wait, can you help us out here? Sure. Would you call up front, Mr. Ellis, please? Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, as you are aware, the, we are putting solar panels across the front, and what we decided was necessary for students was to relocate some of those uh, ticket machines that we currently have for the one-day parking. While we were doing that, we decided we would upgrade all of them and make uh, a couple of them actually solar-powered, 
and moved them into different locations, which made it more accessible for students. Okay. So the whole cost is not the cost of one machine, it's the whole cost of the whole process. So their, their internal workings are all being updated and a new one is being added and a couple will be solar operated. Okay. So that, that's why it seems expensive. I just got it confused because it said quantity one, you know, new parking ticket machine, so. I it's, what it is is actually one order mm -hmm. for all the process. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Ask that question. That's great. Yeah, that will be so much. I just want to comment on sabbaticals, too. Thank you, Evelyn, for staying all day. Tell us worried we're not going to improve this. <laughs> <laughs> so we could pull it and make her more anxious, but we, <laughs> but we don't want to do that. And I agree, it's wonderful to have these back on. I thank Dr. Kinnaman and all the staff and the faculty senate and everyone who submitted a sabbatical report uh, for, what, four or five years now we have not had sabbaticals, and we know that this is a great avenue for refreshing not only the faculty member, but also bringing new information to the college and to the students. And thank you everyone for your participation in making this happen again. It's a wonderful day. Could, could I add also that there were four exceptional sabbatical applicants, and we're only really in a position to do two now, and uh, I'm strongly encouraging the others that submitted to submit next year uh, when we go through this but there were just four superb uh, applications this time. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, we'll go to vote. Student Trustee Campbell, your advisory vote, please. Aye. All those in favor should signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. <laughs> that takes us... Just breathe it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take the D5 machine away. <laughs> that takes us to the action agenda. And uh, all, there's no items pulled from the consent, so we go into number one, revised board policies, the first reading. And do I have a motion to accept the policies for a first reading? So Motion and a second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes. Um, is this the first? Can I address the second one? The first and second. How, how is this working? First, first mm -hmm. and second. What, what trustee? I'm sorry. Board of trustees action item. There's the. Are we talking about item one? The first reading revised policies. Um, what are we? Are we? Are these the ones that we? I'm just pulling it out right now, so I just wanted to make sure. So what we're doing is, can you explain to me the process? So we're doing our first reading right now, and then these will come back to the board next month for a second reading, and that will be the approval process. This first reading, these revisions are based on either changes in administrative procedures or code that we have to implement into our policies based on the league's uh, direction that keeps uh, our policies in order. Okay. And that's only regarding number one, is that correct? Action item Thank you. number one. And if I may hear, my understanding is that we have this first reading and then we have a month to give input if there were to be a change. So, oh, I think you would like to have us a change so that on the next time we have a meeting, we have an opportunity to discuss that or integrate it and, and deal with it. I believe we're a little bit more restrictive on the restrictive on the policies. The procedures we have more of a variation of having input, but the policies and recommendations oh, are requirements. It's, it's pretty much word it's for word. It's choosing this word over that word. Correct. We could have some leeway in how we right. write it, but the content but would have to be. The, the content has doesn't doesn't approve procedures. It just accepts unless it. they're specific to the board. The right. Okay. Right. But the policies, it's basically a word, it would, we might recommend that a word be stronger or, but it's that kind of change. Correct. Like we don't have a lot of leeway though. Uh, policies are recommended by the In law. Yes, in law. Yes, not to mention the law. Okay. And I think I wanted, um, Leanne, can you repeat that? I think it's really important for our board to know that one. So go ahead, Le Le Leanne, what you just said, the series, the 2000 series. Go the, two, ahead. the 2000 series of 
policies and procedures that are specific to the board mm -hmm. will always come to the board for approval. Procedures as well. Procedures as well. That's our next slide. Other procedures. The board sets policy only for the right. other policies. The procedures are brought to you for information unless they're 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And you, you do not um, approve procedures. Accept it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion or questions? Hearing none, student trustee Campbell, advisory vote. Aye. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion has carried. Item number two, revision to Administrative Procedure 2715, Code of Ethics, Standards of Practice, Trustees, Second Reading and Approval. Do I have a motion to approve the re revised procedures as presented? You do. Second. It has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I, I, I guess as a new trustee, I, I'd like to understand a little bit more about the purpose of, of this procedure. Okay. I, I looked at the original one, and, and I see some a number of changes in this newly revised one. So. Perfect, perfect segue. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, there were some questions from the board at the last meeting, and I asked our attorney to the board's attorney to review this, and what you have in front of you is what I will read for the public record. Uh, Trustee O'Neill, you have requested a review as to the legality or illegality of the proposed modification of administrative procedure relating to 2715, currently before the Board of Trustees of the Desert Community College District. I have conducted a review of same and in that process have considered not only pertinent laws as well as cases and, the and conducted a review of the same and in, in the process have considered not only pertinent laws as well as, okay, sorry, I missed my space because of the microphone, I'm sorry. Let me start that sentence over. <laughs> when you're wearing mono lenses and you switch on the other side of the microphone, I was not seeing correctly. Okay, so I will start with I have. I have conducted a review of the same and in that process have considered not only pertinent laws as well as cases and the Community College League recommended policy. I have discussed the proposal with a consultant for the Community College League. I find the proposed modifications completely in order and not violated of any law and or regulation. In fact, the policy is a necessity for the accreditation of Kirk College of the Desert. Failure to have this in place will have an effect upon the ability of the college to be accredited. I recommend its approval by the Board of Trustees. To further answer your question, Trustee Wilson, at our January conference that we got, uh, Trustee Sanchez and I attended, I went as the board chair and Trustee Sanchez's new trustee and Dr. Kinman was there. This was a major issue that was presented for us to all colleges who recommend to go back and look at their policy and their procedures to make sure that they were compliant. And <coughs> when we looked at ours, it, we found that it became a difficult process or not impossible to implement under the old process. And so we recommended a revision. This was based on another community college, which is what our attorney then compared <coughs> with the uh, California League representative as well as the Accreditation Commission. And I believe Dr. Kinnan also had a, a information from the Accreditation Commission about having this policy and procedure in place. Yes, and, I, and the, uh, one of the issues that Dr. Dino pointed out is in uh, California Community Colleges, uh, it's important <coughs> for the trustees to have a, a policy uh, that is one that, that they can use that you know is useful and uh, they can utilize because uh, as we look up and down the state, uh, I think more than half the colleges uh, at some point over the past two or three years have been placed on warning, uh, and the number one uh, reason, uh, number one, but they may have had another reason at each college, but the number one reason. Uh, was because of trustees and their uh, involvement with campus matters and operational matters. Uh, and so as they went and did site visits, uh, there were situations or 
like I said, it's the number one reason that for most of them, uh, where there were, it was being disruptive for the operations of the college. And so uh, teams come in and they uh, usually note that in their uh, reports and then the commission puts uh, the college colleges on sanctions. And that was noted in our accreditation report at that time. There was a comment regarding uh, perhaps the trustees were too involved in the day -to -day operation of the college. Perhaps it would help me a little bit better than to understand. Um, this appears to me, this procedure appears to be what happens when you violate the code of ethics. Correct. So, so where is the code of ethics? Oh, I'm sorry. That's in a, that wasn't that changed. Okay. Okay. That wasn't provided, and that's our that's our fault. We should. Is it's that in, it's in is, your book is that thirty fifty, which is the code of ethics standards? Twenty-seven fifty. No, that's the procedure. No, no. Where is the code of ethics? The code of ethics is in the front part, the policy. Where? Seven, seven, or fifteen? I just showed that. That's just one is policy and one is procedure. The back end it has procedure. The front end is policy. Twenty-seven fifteen says administrative procedure on which one is of your binder. Trustee front half of the binder well, like says the policy, code of ethics. And we did not we did not look to revise that because that comes up on a schedule and all the elements. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. I'll look at that in here. Thank you. Can I see a copy of that, please? <coughs> I thought it was we were part because it also in administrative procedure 3050 it references the board of trustees and the code of ethics. That's yes. And that's that. That's 2715. Okay. So we have the code of we have the board policy and then we have the board procedure administrative procedure. Okay. All we're voting on today is the administrative procedure. When we reviewed the board policy, it meant compliant with this, the uh, re re recommended elements of a board policy. It will come up for an annual review somewhere in the schedule of reviews. And at that time may need to be amended to comply with recommendations by the California League at that time. <laughs> mm -hmm. But right now the only, error, the only difficulty we found based on the information we were trained on in Sacramento was mm -hmm. that our process, our procedure, was lacking, and so that's why the revision in the procedure. Next review, March 2016. There we go. Thank you. That will be for the policy. For the policy. I, I, I went in and delved a little bit into what other community colleges are, are doing and looking at their code of ethics and their standards, and I, I guess I just find this a, a little harsh, a little punitive. Um, in the other uh, community colleges that I looked at, Mount San Jacinto and, and Riverside Community College, um, they basically have a, a type of resolution that they put out to, that involves censure, which we are already have in here, um, but it doesn't go into the detail that is being proposed today. It just seems like what is being offered, um, I don't know, having been a local government, this is, I've never seen something like this that is um, with so much um, kind of punitive. It's more along the lines of progressive discipline in mm -hmm. a way, yes. And it was uh, based on the training that I received, uh, the direction from the league and the accrediting system, uh, commission was that you needed to have a very structured implementation policy. There are other colleges in the state, as you're right, that have very loose ones. I think it's an issue. That's why it's been addressed by the commission, the accrediting commission. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed it was a very, very hot topic at this training, and they recommended that we all go back and immediately revise and bring it up to an enforceable policy and procedure. That was how this came about. Mm -hmm.
There was one instance where um, we sought legal counsel and we brought it to the board's attention and it was more or less um, kind of like a little slap on the wrist in public session, I would say slap on the wrist more than anything. And this is over how many years? Over I've been, a this, years. this will be my 14th year, I'm sorry. Okay, there's been one incident where... One incident where and it was very unusual. And incident. where a trustee was said, mm, you need to think about it. Think about it, yeah. Okay. Um, one thing that I notice in this is number, uh, letter D number. Letter D, um, where it mentions that ethics training is prescribed by AB1234. Technically, we're all supposed to do that every two years anyhow. So that's kind of like a no-nonsense thing. Or probably the So, um, and then Brown Act, like, um, they offer that periodically in the Valley here. You can just go to them on our own. So, you know, I don't see, I don't, I've never, I only know of one case where a college was accused of someone violating the Brown Act and uh, the state came in because it hit the papers and it wasn't, a, found out it wasn't a true violation of the Brown Act, but they hadn't done anything, so the state did come in. Mm -hmm. And I think that the reason why the league probably wants to have it tighter is because of the fact that, um, so that doesn't happen again, you know. But also, you know, I mean, we have an ethics policy for our employees, and we have a procedure, and we enforce it, and um, or we're supposed to, and so we have to police ourselves the same manner, and that's that's the whole essence of it. It isn't that we want to ever have that action taken because. We would hope that everybody would adhere to the ethics standards of practice, and that's may the policy. Never, may we never have that situation. You know, so I think it was miscommunication. That's why action was taken on the procedure previously, but it was just a slap on the wrist. But it did cost us money with the um, are, are the uh, four recommended uh, changes to the additions to item D, are those in place in other community colleges? Yes, this is based on the community colleges. Oh. <coughs> and that's why I asked uh, uh, Mr. Irwin to confirm all this with the uh, California Community College League and their representative mm -hmm. and the Accreditation Commission to make sure we were consistent with what they have, their expectations are. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Chairman, about that procedure. Isn't it up to the discretion of each community college district to decide? The, the one I'm looking at is section, I believe, yeah, I just see that. Um, section F. There's, there's no one in there. I don't, I don't see it in my book. There's a, um, uh, let me, uh, can I explain Go one ahead. thing? Because I was the chair when that other incident okay. occurred. Um, on legal counsel had informed me at the time that there were different actions we could take. He looked at our procedure at the time and he said usually what happens is if you have a list, like we have a list here, mm -hmm. a first violation, you don't go to the bottom thing unless it was, you know, something that was a total illegality and that, you know, you would be taken to court for anyhow. But, um, uh, you know, so it, chances are the thing would be, you know, well, you know, we're, we would have a lawyer present at all of our meetings for all, all the open sessions, which is what we did for about two or three meetings, so that everything went by procedure, so that there were no violations coming forward, and um, there no nothing further happened, you know, and that's why I said it was merely a kind of like a slap on the wrist brought to the person's attention. Everybody went through the ethics training. Everybody went through a Brown Act training again. And I believe that all our all our board members. Um, I, I'm not discrediting the process, and I believe we do should have a policy. Mm -hmm. However, I have concerned on what was striped, especially the one on E, Section E. The board must find by majority plus one that the accused mem the accused member has violated the board ethics statement. Now, you it was striped, and I wanted to make a recommendation that. A lot of times, the majority, I, I like that, I would like to keep that in particular it's, procedure. That, that means actually, though, that it's unanimous. The majority of our board would be three, plus one is four. 
Okay, so, and I believe that what was the the question, and I read that for a long time, mm -hmm. and it didn't occur to me that, oh, that doesn't work. It's kind of like not being, not counting correctly. I think that, that was why. I think it says, basically, our policy is trying to say the majority need to vote, and as Trustee Stefan is saying, mm -hmm. um, you don't start at the bottom. You don't start with, you, you know, you say, right, but everything you just, in you just, you just Exactly, and you just you say to the trustee, down. because I don't think any of us would, would do that's, it that's on purpose. I, I think it would be one of those right. things where you need to say, hey, we've been trying to get your attention, don't do that. You know? But I, I just, that, I but it's in that's writing. That's my concern. It was in writing it's, before. So can, can I just make another yeah. concern, if I may allow to speak here? Um, the, one on, the, the one I'm having really, really trouble. Now you clarify that. Thank you, Trustee Broughton. The one that I really am concerned about is C, right above it. To the extent the misconduct, and I just want it to be on record, involves violation of public meeting laws, including the confidentiality of closed session meetings, Take action to protect the lawfulness of the board meeting, which may include inappropriate legal action against the trustee to ensure compliance with public meeting through the exclusion of the from closed session meetings. As I know it, all of our board members and every city council member is elected by the people to express, and in the United States Constitution, to express our right and not be excluded from any closed session because we are elected by the people for the people. I have a question. We're on procedure 27 and 15. You said C. Are you looking at the one in the handbook? Or? The one in the proposed one. The proposed one. No. That is the one I have a question that I don't think should be included. Unless I don't know my U.S. Constitution. All I can all I can say to that is because Mr. Irwin reviewed all this very thoroughly. I met I would, and since he's not here, I all I can say is that uh, for whatever reason he did not deem that to be a violation. I, I can give an example from my own experience at my last district. We had a couple of trustees that had benefits from the district because they'd been employees. And when we went into closed session to discuss benefits for our existing employees and retirees, uh, we, there was a conflict of interest where they couldn't be allowed in closed session for that discussion. And so that's one example that, that I've experienced because uh, you can't negotiate your own benefits. Uh, but that, that's when you recruit, recruit, I'm sorry, I may say it wrong, recuse yourself from that discussion. That's when the board member or the elected recuses himself from that. That's why we have that. So that wouldn't... But I think what you're saying is that they didn't. That is what I'm saying. I think what this is actually saying is if we've done the slip on the wrist, they come back and they do it again. If you read this through, because it says the trustee's likelihood of continuing with ethical misconduct. So in other words, if they violated the Brown Act, they come back, and we've reprimanded them in public, and they come back and they do it again, and it was something discussed in closed session, and they continue to do it over and over, we know the chances of them doing it again is likely that they will violate it again, and that we have the option then of doing the censure. Because if you read it, it says, based upon the trustee's likelihood of committing ethical misconduct as a trustee, the censure shall then be made public and, and, may, blah, blah, blah. and may everything else right. down below mm -hmm. there, especially yeah. warn the college community yeah. and yeah. everything it's else. Done in okay. It is part of the process. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, but, but you have to really, I mean, to get to censorship, the way it was explained to me by the attorney that I consulted in Riverside at the time, it was um, 
down the list. I, I agree. You know, I just, just would love to legal counsel problem. right now to put this in public and discuss the questions I have. I mean, unfortunately, we don't have our legal counsel here, so I just wanted a little more thorough. Um, to, as I said in last month's meeting, just wanted to, well, like to ask, to, you know. I'd like to remind you that we asked that you had, had concerns, you sent them, and I didn't ever call them. But not legal counsel. I thought he was going to be here, Chairman O'Neill. Well, but remember, I believe Trustee uh, Stefan and Broughton said to put your questions in writing and submit them, and we would get them taken care of. But I would like legal, I wanted to ask some questions to our legal counsel on something that we're doing of policy and procedure. That's fair. All I can do is say that we have our written response mm -hmm. from legal counsel. That's all. That's all I can do. You know. Is is there, um, Chairman? <laughs> is there some reason that this could not be held over uh, to when? It would have to be a motion made to table it, and had to be voted upon. Correct, Carlos? And the majority would have to vote to table it. It would be a motion to postpone. Postpone. Mm -hmm. Until what such time as the our legal counsel would be present to discuss any. Questions. Sure, you, you could do that as a requirement. I think it would be complicated to do it that way. I think the best nice option meeting. is probably to say, you know, that you would have a report back on, so you would, as a board, submit questions by X yeah. day and the attorney would get back Excellent. if you wanted to do that. Uh, but you do want to give it uh, some direction mm -hmm. and you want to give it uh, a timeline to come back. Mm -hmm. would, would that be amenable to? The board? O only if there's a date that the questions have to be in by, because that was my okay. whole point last time, was that the reason these things are presented <coughs> a month ahead of time is it right. gives you the whole month. Yeah. And we did nothing this month. So but I won't give... this is a very busy month. It is, but this it's crazy a busy month, month. <laughs> right? You so, need a new trustee on board, and I'm so, sorry, I blew it. Can we have a new trustee, Becky, in, so, in the spirit? I think we need, if we do that, I think we need a date, a real date. Uh, they really got to be turned in, and yeah. to whom they must the be attorney. turned in. Not to, oh, I thought well, we should have right. turned it in, because then they no. could get misdirected. No. I think we need the, the person to whom they're sent, and the day and the time they need to be turned in. I agree. I agree. I mean, and if they're not turned in, yeah. then we will yeah. do this again, and let's just move no, no. on with it. I, I, <laughs> I concur, get on with it. Trustee Brown. So can we establish a date then? Um, Do I need a motion, please? Mm -hmm. uh, so moved. <laughs> I move mean, to... Let me assist them. Can I assist them? <laughs> Trustee O'Neill, let me assist them. Um, I make the motion to postpone this to the June, the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees in June. On June, what is it? It's the third. No, no it's Thursday the... Of that month Thursday, is from 4:40. Then right. the 14th is that? No, it'd be the 13th. 13th. Yeah. 20th. 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 That's what it is. June 20th. Okay. Um, at and that all questions <laughs> need to be directed to. Do you want them directed the to you or directed no. to the attorney? It's our, it's our legal counsel. That's the, that's why I'm asking to be. Well, we don't want to bombard him with the same question five times either. I mean, but that's why I we're having no objections to going to our attorney, but I don't. I think we need to tell him that there will be questions. Okay, that there are possibility of five questions maximum. Okay, that uh, if you have questions that need to be answered by legal counsel, that they're directed to our attorney David Irwin prior to in writing. In writing. Um, prior to June 10th, uh, I'd say the 5th. 5th? 5th. We all pretty much know our questions, don't we? Yeah. Okay, by the 5th, so that we can get answers and then they can be distributed to the board. Okay. And he'll prepare one report and send it to all trustees. Right, one, okay. one, one report. report. Thank you. I second that. Can you uh, repeat the motion, please, someone? Oh, the you want me to try repeating that motion for you? Oh, you got it? Okay. Motion by Trustee Stefan. 
To postpone this item to the regular meeting of June 20th, questions should be submitted to David Irwin, our attorney, in writing by June 5th. Okay, and we all understand that. We have a motion. So yeah. a second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any, any additional discussion? Hearing none. Trustee, student trustee Campbell. Aye. All those in favor signify, signify by saying aye. Aye. Reluctantly, aye. I didn't hear anybody. Aye. aye. Thank you. Aye. <laughs> I don't want to. Oh, never mind. All those opposed signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, you're not opposed. You're oh, not opposed. oh, no, no. Okay. Okay. Sorry. The motion, the the motion carried. Okay. So that motion is postponed to the next agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Uh, President, certification of signatures. We have a new. Uh, Agenda item that you have an updated version in front of you. Mm -hmm. It's item number one under president. And we have added our new trustee, Trustee Wilson. And we have added also Linda Valkenberg and Steve Renew on the signature page. And any dis do I have a motion to accept the updated? So moved. Uh, is there a second? Second. S moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, student trustee Campbell. Aye. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Human resources working out of class leadership. Do I have a motion to accept the uh, approve the working out of class as presented? So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. So moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, student trustee Campbell, your advisory vote, please. Aye. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. The motion carried. Fiscal services, budget transfers. Do I have a motion to approve the budget transfers as presented? So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? Student Trustee Campbell, your advisory vote. Aye. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 2012-2013 CCFS 311 quarterly financial statement. This is item number two. Do I have a motion to approve the 311Q quarterly financial state status report as presented? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I want to hear what Wade has to say. Wade's already in his seat. Oh, I, know. <laughs> I was like, what do you have to say? Okay, We're good yours, afternoon. Wade. Okay, good afternoon again. Good afternoon. And I guess this will be my last board report. Hi. So let's make this one more fun than the others. Do we get the Right. Um, so for the benefit of our new trustee, the uh, 311Q is a report that we file every quarter that updates the Chancellor's Office on our financial position at the end of each of those quarters. This report is through March 31st, so it is our third quarterly report. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we go through and we reconcile and bring the Chancellor up to date with where we are in accordance with our budget. Along with the report that we file, I prepare a report that you should have in front of you that is four pages. Where? You don't have it in front oh, of you? No, I don't. Right. Hang well, on. we have extras. We don't have a rip. We don't have a rip. Thank this you, Wade, for bringing a handout copy. That's always helpful. Thank you. Especially when we get to rip and tear. Right. Do we get to? Yes, rip and tear. Oh, good. It's a rip and tear. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, it's true. It's like it's like ripping our budget. <laughs> we will start with the first two pages, which look like these. 
Oh, he's going. He's I am. I'm going to go to the back first, and then. Oh, okay. This is prepared very similar to the way our budget looks when we adopt it, and so the sheet, the narrative, goes along with the letters across the bottom and up the side. So if you look at the very the narrative page, you'll see the A indicates the first column at the very bottom of the page. We're okay? Okay. So the first column, A, represents our budget that we had for the year 11-12. And at that time, we had adopted a final budget of $38,136,323. When we ended the year for 2011-12, we had actually spent $36,579,534, which is the B. The difference between those two was a savings that we had incurred of $1,556,789. When we look at D, this is the budget that we adopted and that we're currently operating under as revised month to month as changes and transfers took place. We have the budget uh, transfers that you just adopted are reflected in the budget as revised each month. And as it stands at March 31st, our revised budget for 1213 was $35,784,075. As of March 31st, under E, we had spent, to date, $27,1,893, which gives us unspent funds for the last quarter, or the fourth quarter, which would take us through June 30th, of $8,782,182. If we stay to this projection, and we are right on target, because our $27 million worth of expenditures says that we're, we have spent, at the end of the third quarter, 75.46%. We're with less than a half a percent, or less than a point oh percent of our budget, which is excellent for us at this point, at, at nine months. If we go along the side on the last column, you'll see that we have projected savings currently of a little over two million in salaries. We will spend just under $20,000 more in supplies. In contracts and services, we anticipate a savings of about 178000 and in capital outlay, we expect a savings of 123000 So again, for the year, we are right in line. We are following our projection, and things are moving just as we anticipated. The last two pages of that attachment reflects where we are spending cash today as we were spending cash a year ago. So it's an expenditure to an expenditure, actual to actual, not budget to actual, but actual to actual. And so when we look at this, we see that the district has uh, salaries and benefits decreased spending from a year ago at 3.1%. We've increased on supplies and materials about 36 And the reason for that, by the way, is over the last several years, we have cut the supply budgets down to so very little that all of the supplies that have been stored in the inventory have all been used up, and so they're forced now to actually buy uh, whatever they need. There's no, there's no reservoir for that. Contracts and services have increased 5.04%, and capital outlay decreased cash-wise 51.6%. The capital outlay was cut in half for the current year when we did the budget, and as far as dollars go, those budget dollars are usually spent towards the end of the fourth quarter. People hold off until we're at the very end to see whether we really need to spend capital outlay dollars or not. So we probably will see a little upswing in that during the fourth quarter, but right now um, we are on track. The college is in good financial position. We have good cash flow. We reported to the chancellor's office that um, we are fiscally sound and 
they are very happy with us in that regard. Thank you. So that was that is the report uh, for the 311Q. I did want to take this opportunity to uh, thank the board and the district for the last six years of my service. I've had uh, a great time here, lots of great relationships. There are a lot of great people at this college. This is an incredible institution and uh, watching it change over the last few years has been phenomenal. I also wanna mention that in the bursar's office today, um, we have Lynn Sasher, who Monday will be her last day. She's retiring. Um, and I also want to thank uh, Marlene, who does all the purchasing for the college, Aurora, who does all the financial accounting for the college, Jeanette, who does all the accounts payable for the college. And if you're picking up on this, under the old reorganizational chart, this was a one person per task college. Um, Jeanette, who does all the accounts payable, Patricia, who is the staff assistant, Janet, who is the financial aid portion in fiscal services, Misty and Diana, who do the payroll, Mary, who is our operator and was the uh, past president of CSEA. Of course, we all love and adore Linda Valkenberg, who comes back every year and helps us through our audit process uh, as after she retired. We also have Rosa and Job in the copy center. We have Charles in the warehouse, Lorraine in the mail room, and I also want to give a special thanks to Linda C., who's administrative assistant to the Vice President of Business Affairs, because she's always very helpful. And I guess that's all I have to say. But I do appreciate uh, the time that I've had here at the college. Thank you, Wade. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. as an employee and as a trustee, and I want to thank you for all your hard work. It's been always a pleasure. He's always been right up front and honest and made sure that when I was a staff person, I knew what was happening, and as a trustee, I've known what was happening with our money. So I thank you very much. You've done an outstanding job, and you have a great career decision that you've made, and we wish you the best. And please come back and visit. Yes. Okay. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, uh, we are, we haven't done anything with it. <laughs> we discussed it. Any other, there was any other questions of Wade? Okay, uh, student trustee, your advisory vote, please. Aye. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carried. Notice of completion measure B bond <coughs> projects. Do I have a motion to approve the notices of completion as presented? So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, I have a, a, question, a discussion question. When is the next bond meeting? That would be in oh. June yes. or July. Yes, thank you. But that's not really related to this motion, though. We shouldn't be discussing that, right, Mr. Parliamentarian? Thank you, sir. Can I go off some discussion? Well, you really pick up on that look really well. The Chairman O'Neill, our bond projects, and I, just about our citizens, and you know, just kind of wanting to know in our next. Let's bring it to comments. Bring it. Right. Forward comments at the end. We can do it then. Any other discussion related to the item? Um, we only have one that's a little old a little stale, so my hat's off to whomever's been cleaning up that file. Yes. They're really doing a good job. Rick. All of these are uh, understandably dated, and like there's only one that, that fell through the cracks and got completely finished but didn't get filed. So congrats. We're really cleaning that up. Anything? Any other discussion? Hearing none, student trustee Campbell, your advisory vote, please. Aye. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Aye. Yeah, aye. Yeah, I heard you vote. Uh, item number four, notice of intent to award contract for the applied science project phase one, site preparation and infrastructure for future buildings. Do I have a motion so to approve moved. the notice? 
It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? That one was really hard to read on the iPad. <laughs> it's been awarded to Lowe's bidder, I believe. I'm going for what's been below. Yeah, it was the backup. It was really hard to read on the iPad. Do you want to need the hard copy, Becky? What well, could I? Thank you so much. Oh, only take me a second. I just like to know. President, I mean, Chair, point of privilege. Point of privilege. Is the restroom. Thank you. without him at this time. Uh, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Item number one, academic affairs, curriculum modifications. Do I have a motion to approve the curriculum modifications as presented? So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Great job. Thank you so much. This is a lot of hard work in making all those things line, all those um, classes and programs line up, um, become more transferable, more recognizable by other colleges. Uh, thank you so much. And I'm looking at the human resource management, and it has at distance education modalities, um, and I think that's wonderful. Any other comments, discussion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Next item is approval of the 2013 14 College of the Desert Catalog. Do I have a motion to approve the catalog as presented, which so is moved. in front of you? So moved. Been moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? It's a shame we can't go around and stick in our mm -hmm. Trustee Wilson's picture all over. Well, let me oh. explain that. <laughs> Trustee Wilson's picture will be put in in January for the mid-year revise, as will the correction on the dates of my service on the board. There was pictures were removed, but dates weren't. <laughs> so uh, so that, those were two corrections that were brought to the attention of the chair yesterday. And they will take place in the January in the January device, and we'll get your picture taken. If I know that I'm missing anything without that mug there. We'll get you on the wall on there. Okay, uh, student trustee Campbell, are you feel ready to could vote on the approval of the catalog? That's what item we're on. It's academic affairs item two. Um, you already discussed about putting another trustee. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. All right. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, hearing none, student trustee Campbell, your advisory vote? Aye. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Items for information. We have two items of information. The first one is uh, revision to the administrative procedure. And these again are just items of information for us. They are, we are, do not approve the administrative procedures to policies. And these are in conjunction with the policies that we approved earlier. I do have a question. We have, um, it's basically to me an MOU with the local law enforcement for Mecca Thermal Campus and for the Palm Desert Campus. I feel that I probably know why we don't need one exactly like that for the NDO, the current NDO site, but uh, will we not have a similar thing with the NDO police department once our, our building, our facilities move? It does say that there is, there will be one once it's okay. upon the opening of own campuses part. within okay. the jurisdiction. Okay, I missed that, thank you. It's just logical to me, but... 
Thank you, uh, Trustee Wilson. Uh, for having <laughs> <laughs> you saved me. Mr. Chair, I... She would have a hard copy does for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just do have a, a it's a, a, a grammar or a spelling correction. It, they note it as a Riverside Sheriff's Department when it's actually Riverside County Sheriff's Department. That's true. And you have it several times here in 3520 under local law enforcement. I'm sorry. Uh, Just Maybe. We may need to revise it with the DHS. Is that? Well, it's it's Riverside County Sheriff's Department, and it just said Riverside Sheriff, so it's kind of alluding that to the city of Riverside. Right around Riverside. I got it. Yeah. Yes, I think that would be an improvement to clarify that. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So our, that will be done, and there's no need to bring this back for informational purposes then? Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. The other information item is the uh, engagement letter for auditing services for fiscal year ending June 20th, June, excuse me, June 30th, 2013. Uh, I believe this was requested by a trustee. I think, um, just to note, I like, um, we, when they came over and discussed this, Becky mentioned that having it in layman's language. I just kind of want to reiterate when this audit team, team gives us that audit that we have a, a very extensive narrative in layman's language on what we're auditing. So just wanting to revisit that and kind of explicitly if they could provide the board that. Thank so we, what we're, we're asking for, Trustee, is the executive summary be written in a... Third grade. In a manner that is understandable for uh, the general public too, because this is posted on our website. Right. So yes. So I did ask that this engagement letter be here as information because it is the only information. It's something we do every year, but the letter was addressed to the board of trustees, so we should acknowledge that we did indeed get it. So, and like I say, it's a so, something you always do. It's not like it's some magical hidden thing, it's, but everyone should know that it's there. It's a long oh, letter. it's a long letter. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, I actually, it's a for the year that ends June the thirtieth. When will the auditors actually start coming and collecting information? That's this is just. I'm not asking them. That it's going to be June the third or July the fifteenth. Just sort of when did they start collecting? In July. Mm -hmm. They're here right away. They're here right away. Okay. And by the time all the staff return from summer break, they will have lists of questions ready for them at the end of August, and everybody will be called on the carpet to respond. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you have a very brief window to respond. Mm -hmm. And then they will all prepare their final report. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chair, just for your, the board's information, Linda Valkenberg has already sent an email out several weeks ago, maybe even a month and a half ago, to the various people that provide some of the info to the auditors. And that has already gone out, so okay. we have already started collecting that information for the auditors. Thanks, the, first, the first round of visits will be actually the week of June 10th. So the auditors will be Oh, good. Here. Amazing. That's great. Okay. Good. Very good. It's good to know, and I think since we uh, did so well in our last year's audit, even with a new audit firm, which was what we had not expected to happen, uh, that uh, we look for a better outcome this year. Thank you. Okay, so that takes us to item number 14, suggestions for future agendas. Do we have any? And we will start with, how about students, Trustee Campbell, we'll start with you. Do you have any suggestions for future agendas? You don't have to. <laughs> don't feel well, pressure. You can come back to me if that's possible. Okay. In our procedure. All right, trustee, step on. No. No? I think of any email. Yeah, I was going to say no. I'll just email them in if I. And, and um, Dr. Kenneman was so kind as to provide us with a list last <laughs> meeting 
um, as to things that he intended to focus on from items that we've asked for previously. So I guess my only request is that we, I don't mind adding to that list or being wiggled around, but I love having a program and I'm looking so I can show Aurora. So I'll, keep, I'll rattle a lot of papers so people have to hear them while I look for that. Could you update that list for sure. us? I know you planned on adding things and uh, perhaps the next board meeting we could have that for one of your presentations. Certainly. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That means I don't have to find it. Trustee Wilson. Just a, a couple of things. In, in reviewing the, the uh, administrator procedure on local law enforcement, uh, I was a little um, puzzled that it talks about um, uh, reporting a crime or an emergency that you call the security department at a certain phone number. Uh, and then to call for a non-emergency, you call the same phone number. So to me, uh, your, the response time for both an emergency and a non-emergency is the same. And so I, I'm a little concerned, I uh, was a little concerned about so that. Very good point. I believe the, the number that they list is actually a cell phone that um, people carry around. Um, so there is um, a 211 number, which is actually a campus phone. Okay. Um, so someone that's in the office that will pick up the phone. And then the other full number that's listed is actually a cell phone that a security officer carries with them at all times. Um, so anytime there's a, a situation that occurs, someone will pick up that line. Um, I think the reason they did it that way was because there are times when there's no one sitting in the office. Mm -hmm. And so even though it's a non-emergency, it would normally go to the office. If no one's there, at least it will come to the cell phone. Okay. But I, I believe that's how they did it. Because that pers that does, that's not stated in this procedure. It's, okay. it's not made clear. We, we can certainly pass along to that office to see if we can make that a little bit better. Okay. Yes, and because also I believe that there is a rotating uh, in the system where if one officer doesn't uh, respond, it goes to another phone, and it's it's kind of invisible because I know that our uh, director of security said that uh, indicated to me he's like sixth on the list, and he's told his officers that uh, it should never get to him. Uh, and so, and, and so I don't know whether they're probably different numbers that each of them have, but somehow it rotates. I think it automatically forwards from one to the other to the other until the first one picks up. But again, as a, someone is looking at it with new eyes, it looks that, strange. It looks right. very strange. Yeah, we, so. we, could very, we could we could talk with the security director and see if we can clarify that a little bit. The, the other suggestion I have is, is as you know, my employer CVAG, we are in the midst of a uh, major project, the 1E11 Parkway, which is a 53-mile corridor um, along the Whitewater uh, River Trail and uh, Highway 111 uh, that'll be um, allowing for uh, uh, pedestrian walkways, uh, bikes, NEVs. And um, I thought this might be something that truly would impact College of the Desert and the students here. And that at some point, uh, I'd like to ask uh, my executive director uh, at CVAG, Tom Kirk, to make a presentation to this board. Great. Thank you. Dr. Kinman, we work on scheduling that. Trustee Sanchez. I think it's great that we have those items for the agenda. I just um, would like to see some timelines on the agenda, I'm a little more specific. I think I can you have that, but um, we have some. They've been something that's been coming up, and just having it a little more thorough on not just a general and saying. So we have an idea. Let's say we have a pet project. She has a cord. You know, it would be nice to um, have a timeline on that. And that'll be coming next month, yeah. right? Okay, so next month. Thank you. Any other future agenda items? All right, we are up to item number 15, board comments. Uh, let's start the other way. Trustee Sanchez, any general comments today? Yes, you do. You have a question. Uh, Principal Bonding. Your bond meeting question. Oversight committee. Oh. Oversight committee. Yes, when is the next oversight? Thank Steve, you. Steve, can you help us? Thank you. Okay, the, the oversight committee meets quarterly. The next meeting is June 11th at 3.30. So interested public can, this is a Brown Act meeting, so the interested public can find the meeting times, the agenda, the meeting minutes, and everything about the committee makeup, the bond language, everything about Measure B 
on the college website. It would be nice for um, another comment is to have that attorney that represents the bond to come before the board of trustees. I think it would be a very insightful and very, um, he made a presentation to the bond oversight committee, but making it to our board of trustees here would be most beneficial. So a suggestion to put that in our agenda to have a presentation made by the attorney who represents our bond that the citizens of Coachella Valley pass. Thank you. Trustee Wilson, any comments? How did I do? You did yeah. great. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. First thing on. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> Quick learner. <laughs> uh, trustee, student Trustee Campbell, any comments? Uh, yes. Uh, just around election times, or uh, some of our student leaders, that were, well, one of these student leaders went up to the Mecca campus and Indio campus, and they, you know, they got a chance to communicate in classrooms and stuff like that. Um, the students, you know, they had a conversation with the students and the teacher. They said they would really like to see um, like more financial aid or workshops and um, more um, more events that happen on their campus. You just don't want to be forgotten, so I think that would be a good thing to do, get more um, assistance out there. So, I, just to add to that, I think we, as we keep growing, we need to keep that always in our thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's just something we always need to be thinking of as we lose sight of those other sites. Mm -hmm. Lose sight of those sites. Trustee yes. <laughs> 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 Stefan? Um, I was hoping I could get a copy of the recognition items that the president went through today. Also, um, I want to invite the public to the final being at the Indio campus on May 28th at 9 in the morning? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock in the morning. Day after Memorial Day. And uh, that's going to be a really exciting event. The final being. So hopefully everybody will show up. Trustee Broughton. Um, no, I just, yes, overall, you've done a really good job. You're really moving, you're a quick learner, fast learner. Um, but I did not have an opportunity to thank Wayne properly and for all of the many hours that he's put in here and all the hard work. So we'll miss him. I wish him the best. Okay. Uh, I don't have any additional comments other than what I've already suggested. I do have a Something I would like to put on the agenda for a discussion. You're not in order. No, 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 no. It's a comment. It's something I'm wondering. I noticed we, when Bonnie was president, we uh, shifted from long oral reports to written reports with a brief summary. And as the year and a half since Bonnie st started that policy, we've shifted back and I think we are getting shorter written reports and longer verbal reports. So I would like the board to think about if they want to continue with the written reports and the, or not because the intent of those was to reduce the amount of time we spend in the meeting explaining what we've done and I think we've gotten away from that intent which is fine if that's the board's will but I just want to put that on one of the future agendas is a discussion item. Instead of waiting until our reorganization meeting in December, I think we should, you know, decide people are taking time to write these out and then they're, you know, other people aren't sometimes and we need to decide how we're going to proceed. So I'd like to put that on the next month's agenda so we can discuss it. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else for the good of the order? Hearing none, we are not going back into closed session. Oh, thank you. Graduation on Friday, uh, a week from today. Mm -hmm. uh, we look forward to uh, what is going to, I think, going to be a mega event, and uh, we will all be there. Hopefully, <laughs> after all the weeks, act, another week's activities, everybody survives. So we look forward to graduation on Friday, one week from today. Also, the nurses' pinning is that day. And so that is in the afternoon. So it's another busy, busy week for everybody who can. And we realize that you all, we all can't at times for various reasons. But you know, if you can, please do. 
Okay. Uh, I think we are adjourned, and we actually met the timeline. We're adjourned. <laughs> so, Mike, you can start cleaning up.